from Samson. Like it? Already rolling. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, it do it. Did uh, I've had like close friends come on the podcast yeah. before, and the lights, the cameras, and everything. It's kind of takes them a little bit to become oh, themselves. So I was I like, see. so now I push record and everything before people. And then people you just record. edit and. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then I just cut it in, and then none of it's live. So yeah. if there's anything that you're like, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah, yeah. I shouldn't, or we should take that out. Yeah. I could completely do that. Oh no, that's cool. Um. But yeah, thank you very much for coming. No, um, yeah. I appreciate it. This Guess is super, super cool. Just, just <laughs> thank you. you know. Thank you. Yeah, I, I got here and I realized that I was trying to connect with other people that did podcasts and stuff, but I don't think there's many people on the island that do it. Not like this. Yeah. Yeah, all of my podcasts have been um, like on the phone with people. Oh, really? From the, yeah, from the mainland. Like Skype or Zoom or? No, primarily just uh like phone, literally phone. And I think, well, I think Skype, but not like FaceTime or anything. Mm -hmm. And then they would just edit and, you know, put it out there and stuff. Yeah. Can you hear me? I'm yeah, I could hear sure. you. Okay. I could hear you good. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's something different that happens in person. Yeah. Like something does happen between two people yeah. when they're actually interacting. And, um... I feel like if I was going to contribute anything to the all of the digital content that's online, like let me contribute something that's as close to being as real as yeah. possible. You yeah. know, like what it's like for two people to interact with each other. True, true. Because I don't really think people do that that often anymore. Nope. I have to agree with you on that one. Yeah. I don't know. I think social media sometimes can just take away from human interaction in general you Definitely. know what i mean i guess because yeah. you're like because i'm 36 so mm. i was born in a different time and we didn't have much of phone was still on the wall yeah phone <laughs> was still on the wall i mean not as far back as the you know the yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. but phones were still on the wall and just very little access to things so i mean it was you really had to like get creative with doing stuff or yeah. like, you know just spending more family time or even that sometimes I mean, yeah, I, I do feel like nowadays people have less of that interaction, you know, that human connection and just you see it. You yeah. see it when you walk around or even if you go to like the um, the restaurants and stuff. Yeah, and there's the whole family's on a different yeah, device. Yeah, like what the heck? So, yeah, yeah. I I'm definitely having a rule with my family. Like yeah. if we're at the table, they go down unless you're going to show me something that has to do with your day. Exactly. You know? So yeah. it's just like. I mean, even I mean, even within my own home, because my brother has eight keiki. Oh, really? And, um, you know, even that, too, like they're always on their devices. And I mean, my brother and his wife tried or they tried to, like, make more. Limit it. Yeah, they yeah. try. But it's still hard because you see you, s you can see how much of a, a factor it is mm -hmm. with this rising generation. They, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, it definitely takes away from sincerity and then and then also yeah. it's just like you need to you need to look at people and learn a bunch of uh, there's a spectrum of emotional yeah. cues and body language true, that i feel like true. kids don't pick up on as yes. much anymore yes like um I, I noticed a big difference so every job i've ever had i've uh, at least more corporate kind of gig i've implemented and then raise a team of interns on it so interns you would get a lot of kids that are still in college yeah and then something just happened where like the past a uh, couple jobs that i had the kids that came on they just they seemed a little bit more fragile and mm. i don't know maybe mm. it was just them yeah. as an individual but like eye contact wasn't really a thing. Mm. Like I and uh, like I would have to say like, okay, stop looking at the computer. You're gonna look at me now. Yes. We're gonna talk about what we're gonna do, yes. and then you're going to do it. You know, yeah. and not just like fidget around and and do something else. Like uh, so, I think it's Im important to kind of like this, like put it out there and show yeah. what it's like for two people to actually communicate with each this other. Is what real conversations look like, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you'd be surprised at how many people come on, and I mean with phones being like smartphones that are mobile devices now yeah. it's like not many people sit down and have 
a sincere interaction with someone else with no interruptions for a couple hours like that's now like people are always looking down at their phone and doing something else i am very guilty of that as well but mainly with texts i'm not reading my social media i i um for the longest time did not have social media Mm -hmm. and i had to because of my career yeah but like i wouldn't have gotten it otherwise i really wouldn't have because i'd like to be opposite and in that way Mm -hmm. so i really took pride in not having any social media but then my first like sponsor sponsors like all right well if you want me to sponsor you (laughs) you gotta post her you gotta get Mm -hmm. yeah you gotta get facebook and i well i mean the gym that i was at too like my coach was like well you gotta at least get one Mm-hmm. And since Facebook and Instagram was pretty popular down here, I'm like, fine, then I'll get Twitter because nobody really did Twitter. But <laughs> apparently Twitter is super popular in the mainland. So, I, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I had Twitter for the longest time and then I had to get. You and did know. you use it a lot? Not really. No, <laughs> no. I yeah. still don't. My well, my manager like does all my tweets. Well, now people know. But <laughs> you know, for the most part, he does all of my tweets. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I I don't like it either. I yeah. mean, ju- I just brought on a few people to help me with it. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's there's sometimes that I I don't mind being active on it, and then there's yeah. other times where it's just like I don't want this like a part of my day at all. Yeah. You know, like I'll go on my phone and just as a reflex, I'll start. I'll go like to Instagram and start yeah, scrolling. Yeah, like, yeah. okay, I gotta stop this. Yeah. Like, I, I cannot. <laughs> You know, I need my life to be consumed with my life, not other people's, and yeah. stay focused. You know? No, I get that. I totally get that. I'm, yeah. yeah. I just, yeah, I didn't like it. I used to get like teased at my old gym, like, "What are you Amish?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> I just, I'm cool. I don't have any of that stuff because yeah. I don't want it." Yeah, well, <laughs> it's like our generation, and you're a few years older than me, so it's like that. It really is the paradigm shifting time like things really really change yeah you know like i think instagram just started getting big around the time i went into college like Mm. 2007 8 maybe around that time i think you're right yeah yeah and then but then everyone said and then i have a facebook i used to be active on it when i was like i didn't get a facebook until i went to college or was it college or high school one or the other and then around right after college i just stopped using it as soon as as soon as you would start scrolling and it was just arguing Mm. and political views and everything it's still like that yeah i was like i need to get out of here yeah so i feel bad because i used to just go on to thank people that wish me happy birthday because it gave me a notification right right, now i kind of feel like you know you call me or at least text me if like if it means something yeah you already got the notification yes (laughs) yeah no i'm with you on that the real the ones that like know you super super good they'll text or they'll call so yeah yeah, I know. I used to like, um, like when people would message me on for happy birthday. Well, I still kind of do it where I'll just like like it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like the people who I'm really close with, like I'll like say a little something. Oh, thank you, Auntie. You yeah. know, love you too, Auntie. Or thanks, cuz, you know, like that. But random people I just, you know, like. Yeah. Whatever, you know. Yeah, give me something a little bit more than just. Yeah, the, the the gif, cle- the yeah. gif, or is it gif? What is it called? You know those pictures. I say gif, but I yeah. really don't know. Yeah, the gif. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, whatever. Yeah, so let's bring people up to speed. So, what is it that you do? I am first and foremost a professional MMA fighter. I've been doing mixed martial arts now, I um uh, over ten years, so at least eleven. Damn. E- either going on eleven, but mm-hmm. definitely more than ten. And then I started martial arts. I did Taekwondo when I was 15. So I've okay. been doing it for like 20-ish years. Just martial arts in general, been doing it for 20 years or so. And then, um, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you have the other. I have m- another job, but you know, that's not my main focus. That mm-hmm. is just to do what I need to do until the other stuff come to fruition, yeah. which eventually it will. You know, it'll get to that point. So just can't quit. No, no, yeah, like, um, I definitely am not that for sure, you know, Mm. I, uh, I am a firm believer of your passions will lead you in the right direction, Mm. and you just gotta 
ride with it. You got to go with the punches. Yeah. <laughs> you got to flow with it. So. Yeah, for sure. It's a safe bet, right? Like it is. if you're going to if you're going to invest your life into something that you want to make money on or a career, yeah. it might as well be something that you're interested in and that you like to do. It is exactly that. Mm-hmm. You know, you might as well do something that you love doing as mm-hmm. opposed to like waking up miserable and not having a good time making money but still like yeah i mean that's where i was at (laughs) me too (laughs) me too like i i mean all i had a lot of different jobs and uh i just you know i mm, yeah just was not happy you know i was not happy at all yeah and now i you know it's still hard work it's still the grind but like i said you got to do what you got to do until you get to where you know you can get and yeah. i think it, the st- it's one thing that you got to have is like knowing that along the way you're just gonna have these setbacks and these failures but it's as cliche as it is it's not about giving up you mm-hmm. know it's not about quitting um i think in those moments that's when you really know that you gotta like push through when you feel like that yeah you know it's teaching you something yeah and like something will be right around the corner waiting for you mm-hmm. so I mean, that's my opinion on it. Everybody has, like, you know, some people, like, they want security. And I Mm -hmm. get that. But I was never about that, you know. I mean, I don't know. Money comes and goes, you know. And, I mean, that's just the way I feel about it. It doesn't do much for my life. So, I mean, I might as well work at, you know, living my dreams. Yeah. So. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, if it's something that you that you love, even if you have to do something else that yeah. might not be what you love, but it's to fuel the thing yes. that you love, yes. then Correct. it's so much easier to get through that because you have something that you're passionate about that you're yes. working towards versus when yes. that's not in your life. Yes. You know? Yeah, there's like a, there's like a purpose, mm-hmm. you and know? Definitely, yeah. I mean, how many people in life go through, you know, through their day not really having that purpose, you know? So Yeah. And again, I, I'm not going to knock it. Some people, their purpose is their ohana. Mm-hmm. And that's why they go to work. They love their ohana. They provide. So that's for them, you know. Like, mm-hmm. everybody's different. But for me and my journey, like, my purpose is to be a professional mixed martial arts, <laughs> yeah. you know, so <laughs> artist. You start, so you've been doing it, like, all in for 10 years now. So yeah. So that's, like, late 20s. So what yeah, was the yeah. shift from whatever it is like i feel like arguably late 20s is kind of like okay i'm an adult now i have something i need to focus on something i need to do be responsible about where was it just because you were always interested in martial arts or i yeah i mean i i've always loved martial arts i mean you can go back to when i was a child you know you watch stuff like teenage mutant mutant ninja <laughs> turtles yeah, yeah, and yeah. That. who's your but favorite did you have a favorite I, if i had to pick one i, like I the would, orange one what was his name again oh uh, michelangelo, michelangelo yeah he's funny Pizza. but i <laughs> know i go with colors so uh, uh red and purple is some of my favorite Raphael colors so those Donat- two yeah Donatello? no wait yeah 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 because yeah. leonardo is a blue one yep okay so <laughs> I would say probably Raphael and Donatello. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Even though Raphael was like kind of crabby and punchy. Yeah, definitely. Anyways, to get back to yeah. what was your question, and I'm so, sorry. So what was like uh, in your late 20s? Oh, how did yeah. you kind of steer towards that being like, okay, I'm going all in on this? Um, I, well, let me reverse back a mm-hmm. little bit. What sparked me into going into mixed martial arts in general was I saw Gina Carano and Tanya Evinger fight down here at the oh. Blaisdell for Elite XC. And that just kind of took, you know, it sparked it and took it in the direction that it is now. Um, prior to prior to where I am with my MMA as a Taekwondo um, artist, I, I guess we'll call it artist, you know, whatever. Um, I had ambitions of g- trying to get to the Olympics at one point because I felt like I could. But when you're young and then injuries happen, mm-hmm. you think it's the end of the world. I'm just like, you know, I thought I could never recover from it. And I and there was like an age, like, you know, that certain age bracket yeah. that you could make it happen for the Olympics. So, you know, that kind of devastated me. And then I went down this um, this road of... You know, I'll, I'll call it road of, n- well, not nonsense because you learn a lot from it, but just down this different path. Um, and then I started, you know, partying and doing all of that things and just kind of just, 
I don't know, not having a purpose in life, you know, just, you know, working, partying, whatever. And then I went back to my gym that I used to do Taekwondo at. So, like, what was the gap there? The gap with the... Um, From the time that, that she... Uh, we're devastated and then the started gap partying. was all of that partying and stuff yeah. that was a gap like how long was it uh, i would say uh maybe a few years yeah yeah like a few years not really being super active in the arts in general then i went back and just i was still like you know like i just went back to like exercise and stuff like that blah 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 and then um was just doing regular training with taekwondo and that the school that i was part of they had a kickboxing program so you know i do that a lot and then somehow yeah i ended up at the gina carano fight and that kind of just sparked my uh ignited things for me and you know did my research started at icon in hawaii kai with mm -hmm. chris lieben and i've been to a bunch of different gyms after that but it, that was I believe the first MMA gym I've been to and slowly but surely worked my way to where I am now. Um, yeah, so <laughs> 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 I mean, I uh, I mean, it's been a journey for sure. Yeah. And a lot of different lessons have been learned within that journey. Um, definitely for me personally, like stuff that I had to like deal with and go through and realize my own potential and the things that I was capable of and realize that a lot of s the stuff that I was doing earlier on in life was actually um, just postponing what I am today and what mm -hmm. I'm working towards. So it was just, you know, basically hindering uh, what I believe I can be. So, yeah, you know, yeah. life lessons, yeah. you know, I you learn you live you learn you yeah. know what are some of the things that you feel like were times that it became very clear that you were postponing it like, uh, like here i am muddling around in a bunch of right. stuff that has nothing to do with what i'm supposed to do that's a that's a actually a really good question i mean i there there's been a few moments but for sure because i've battled with substance abuse and i've battled like you know sober relapse sober relapse you know um I think it was just kind of maybe a few years ago I had a, another relapse. Um, the longest up until this point that I was sober was probably no more than a, a year. Mm -hmm. I, I'd always get close to a year and then I'd relapse. So I've been like three years sober so far. Congratulations. And thank you. And I will continue to be. But um, and what was the drug of choice? Uh, it was all kind at different yeah. moments. It was either like alcohol or pills mm -hmm. or uh, cocaine, you know, ice, pakololo. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do like still love the smell of pakololo, but <laughs> I just e yeah, and I don't <laughs> judge people who smoke either. You know, yeah. it's just I can't do it because it, for me and my journey, it doesn't align, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I, yeah, um. So I think it was a few years ago, I had another relapse and was at the bar with some of my... Um, and you don't drink either? No, not mm. anymore. So it was at the bar with some of my friends. I was a personal trainer at the time. And, you know, people after they would work out, we'd work out, we'd go like where the gym was located. There's like bars that yeah. you bar hop and stuff. Like little hole in the walls, nothing fancy. And I don't know, it just kind of hit me one day like, we were there was all drinking and having a good time but literally in my moment of like super plastered and stuff like i just this inner voice was just like what are you doing here you know this you you know you can be so much more just this things like was talking you know like just talking within myself like you know like you need to get out of this just stuff like that you know there's so much like more your conscious perked yeah, up yeah pretty much yeah you need to get out of this there's so much more that you can do there's so much mm. more that you know you can do just just literally my conscience so yeah that was probably one of the uh, more uh profound moments you know where it like really hit me hit me mm. and you think i've been kind of compiling and building up for a little bit probably like and it was in the back of your mind and yeah then you're just like, yeah what am I doing? yeah i i honestly do feel like it was yeah. i do like it was compiling and then it just kind of hit me in that moment you know and 
I mean, still sobriety for me didn't come after that whole talk with myself and probably talk with God, but it eventually came, mm -hmm. you know, and yep, now I am sober. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, So you, you feel like you're an all or nothing person? I sometimes I do mm -hmm. with certain things. I do feel <coughs> that way, like with my MMA career, like I do feel that way. And with substances, I do feel that way for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's weird, like, because I feel like there might be a lot of people in AA that maybe maybe it was more about developing the, the discipline with it. Right. And then the pressure of needing to do none of it at all is, right. like, so heavy. Right. And, uh, you know, that could weigh a lot on somebody, like, any, at any yeah. point in time. Just the simple fact that you could fuck up is a big Correct. thing, you know? Yeah, you know, it's funny that you say that because um, for me, I, um, I learned that, like, slowly, like, weaning off mm -hmm. would have been the better approach. But you had to. Cold but, turkey. Um, when I did do the cold turkey and I would go back through my relapses, I realized that, I, one, my body couldn't handle as much. So I guess it I was kind of like weaning out in itself because mm -hmm. I could I couldn't take in as much, and um, two I personally feel like weaning for some people is okay. Like mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. Because then I would ha uh I'll talk another moment um few years like not this one but like before that like was it with Pakalola and stuff like that I had gone up and down with that as well. Another talk with myself like. I would smoke and I'm like, okay, well, at least I'm not smoking, you know, five times a day. I'm mm -hmm. only doing this like morning and night. So, mm -hmm. you know, even little talks like that had helped me get through it. And I personally feel like to each its own. If you can cold turkey, like some of my, like my parents had cold turkey, you know, like whatever they did. And some people can, but also weaning is okay too. You know, like don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think you get to that point where, like, okay, maybe I don't really need this, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it eventually comes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. my thought process on it. I have a best friend that, that's still s struggling mm. with uh, substance abuse. And I know for, for them and for a lot of other people, it's like the – like, I'm very hard on myself yeah. with a lot of the things right, in, in right. my life in general. I'm not, I'm, I have ideas from maybe where that comes from, but in general, I tend right. to be pretty hard. I have high expectations for mm. myself and I need to check that sometimes because sometimes I feel like mm, when I like, um, you know how there's that saying like treat others the way you sh you wish to be Correct. treated or treat mm -hmm. others the way that they wish to be treated is right. really the golden rule. Um, but it's like when you have high expectations of yourself, sometimes I feel True. like I would hold high expectations to all other people as well. Right. right so if right, it's like right. treat others the way, um, you wish to be treated, which it really is the way they wish to be treated. But if, if you treat right. them the way you wish to be treated, yeah. then you'd want to treat you with those same high expectations, but right, not right. everyone is you and not everyone right. is going after the same things as you. That's and true. next thing That's you know, true. you pigeonhole some of your relationships or, or whatever it is because yeah. you're trying to hold them to that same standard, but they're true. not you. They don't struggle with the same things that you struggle with. They're not going after the same things. That's actually pretty cool. I never thought of that because I do agree with that model but m my model also is just like literally just be kind yeah oh well, that's good you know what i yeah, mean yeah in general yeah. hawaii is aloha is very, yeah. is very just be know, aloha no yeah. be kind but no that that's interesting that's a i you know that's true treat others the way you want to be treated but then like you said certain people have different expectations mm -hmm. So it should really be treat others the way they want to be treated. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you even just thought about like there's introverts and there's extroverts at yes. a very high level. If you yes. treated an introvert the way and I'm an extrovert, if you treat an introvert the way an extrovert wants to be treated, you're starting the, you're right. starting this off wrong. Right. You know, right. you're starting it off wrong. They, they That's not what they want. You yeah. Know? No, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But so. I, that's why if you just be aloha, you just mm -hmm. be kind. Oh, sorry. I think I just hit your plan. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> he doesn't mind. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you just be use the ki the kind rule, that one might work better too. For so, sure. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So. The loving spirit and keeping your, yeah. your heart open. You know? Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's what it should be, you know. Um, just 
uh, showing love and respect is yeah. primarily what people should do. And again, I feel like nowadays the younger generation does lack that. Well, I don't know. I just feel like nowadays people in general, because of we'll go back to like you know them being on their mm-hmm. like stuff, like it kind of desensitizes them from human <coughs> na- human nature yeah. in a sense, you know. For sure. I mean, who's gonna you? I mean, first of all, thank God we didn't have Twitters and Instagram when we were fourteen I years old. I thought about that. You know? I thought about that. Yeah. You know, I thought I'd be maybe I would have been okay, but I don't think I would have been okay with that. You know. Yeah. I mean. Like, yeah. You see, it's kind of like uh, you know, which isn't really a thing in Hawaii, but road rage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like yeah. the fact that you're in this vehicle can suddenly a lot like allow you to be an asshole to someone else at the highest extent right, so i've heard right. some people say it's kind of because you're already at a seven out of ten when you're driving you're already so alert and everything right. like that that you're more but at the end of the day when you see someone when you read some of these comments that people yeah. make online it's like that you true. would never ever say this yes, to me to yeah my no face. so true yeah but then so i've um half sister sister nonetheless that's 14 and i could only imagine the kind of things that yeah. that age group with yeah. a profile and people taught like you get home and yeah. a lot of the times there um i read this book the coddling of the american mind and it, and it goes into a lot of this but it's just how the social interactions for those age groups of people how so many of them are taking place in this social media realm right, not right in real life as much yeah no that's true that's so true and then i feel like it's <sighs> probably better here but like i am so lucky i grew up playing outside mm, yes know, yes our neighborhood had a ton of kids yeah i would spend hours alone when i was like 10 years old in the woods you know like yeah. my parents didn't need to be home oh my gosh he was wasn't 11. like freaking out like being in the woods like at night time i wouldn't <laughs> well, freak you out i probably wasn't in there at night but no i oh, I wasn't yeah, really, oh okay. it didn't really freak me out as much it felt i felt at home i always feel at home in the woods uh, yeah you know? okay like, okay yeah yeah, yeah but, no that's true but playing in the neighborhood we had like a big like group of kids like riding bikes that was yeah. the thing and now especially back home in the massachusetts connecticut new england area i feel like if i'm going through those neighborhoods and i see kids playing outside i start rooting for them like they're right. on the home team right. like hell yeah thank right. god yeah but yeah. some people will call the cops because they're they you know the kids are they're they're young and they're playing outside and, and oh in all gosh. actuality this is the safest time in humanity especially yeah. if you're in america exactly that we've ever exactly. lived exactly yeah you know what it's funny you say that because like i hardly see that nowadays like just like you know people being outside playing like the younger one yeah. it's like games or computer or phone like yeah. you know that's so true yeah I, I mean i was the same way i grew up and uh we used to play like street football mm-hmm. and street basketball every game outside yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i always had to prove my worth being like one of maybe one or two girls and the other girl was more prissy and i was like more of this like you know like tomboy and um like little roly poly kind of a thing <laughs> So I, but I could definitely catch up. I was a really great receiver and I was a good thrower. So oh, yeah, yeah w- once the boys knew, they're just like, oh yeah, we want her. <laughs> but until then, I'm like, all right, I'll just show you guys, you mm-hmm. know, because I'd always play with my cousins. They like make me do like running routes and then I like, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. And where do you fall in your family as far as like age wise? Are you in the older group of kids, younger? Like, you talking about like with cousins and stuff like that, or just yeah. cause it, or in general? Um. Yeah. I think, I think, well, well, for my immediate Ohana, it's just me and my brother. So mm-hmm. I'm the younger one. And then, I mean, if I'm looking like with all cousins and stuff like that, I think I'm one of the younger ones there as well. Okay. They are like all older than us. And your brother's younger or older? He's older. He's older? Yeah. He is four years older than me, so he's 40. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so. is he in a martial arts at all? No, no. no. He's, he's... He's a different type of an artist. He's a really great musician. He can mm. play the piano, the violin, the viola, the cello. Wow. Yeah, super, super, super talented for sure. I wish I could do that. I can't, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so he's that kind of an artist mm-hmm. for sure. So art does run in run into ohana <laughs> yeah 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 this is my brother so oh that's bob marley but wow. he painted that and then he painted the alan watts one behind you 
and Nikki Waugh behind me. Oh, wow, that's that's nice. one of our best friends growing up. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's pursuing this then. Yeah. Nice. Yep. yep. Nice. So then we both were heavy into art, like actually painting and drawing. But then I was in talented art my whole life. And then um, I got to high school and they're like, you need to take drawing one. And I'm like, drawing one? You've been putting me in talented art my whole life. And I got yeah. mad and I was, you know, a little kid, yeah, hormones yeah, yeah, raging. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'll just do shop. I like working <laughs> with my hands anyway. And then I feel like that's where I kind of deviated. Okay. But I've still always been a music and video type okay. of okay. artist, you know. So, yeah. you know, I figured when I got out of corporate, I was like, let me think about when I was a kid, what were the before sex drugs rock and roll right before right, right. all of that and what were the things that i loved that mm. i spent hours doing and the time just flew by yes and it was video camera martial arts like i was like okay so if i'm yep. gonna reorganize my life these things need to be a big part of it at okay. all times okay yeah and then that's i love cool. talking to people so cool. i was like you know this is a good thing for me oh that's super cool yeah, yeah um I, re I that's one of the things that i feel like in the education system they lack definitely they don't it's even like they cut art first yeah not only that but they don't even promote um they don't promote the youth to like pursue their goals and their passions you know it's just like tests or yeah or you know you have to have like a, i don't know like i worked in the department of education as an educational assistant for like eight years and i just was not a big fan of it i would probably get into a lot of trouble I actually did get into a lot of trouble with like different teachers and stuff because I mean I just didn't like the way they teached and how yeah. they uh, approach students they were very harsh and very I don't know like just very cookie cutter yeah, yeah. I don't know they just didn't treat them kind you mm -hmm. know and to me that's one I I loved working with the Kolohe kids because Kolohe means naughty. <laughs> okay. They were the best ones because honestly, they were just misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And all you had to do, honestly, all you got to do is give them like respect and show them that you can be kind. I, for the most part, like none of them are really manipulative. Mm -hmm. And they were pretty, like, they were good with me. You know what I mean? It's just, I could see like how they would interact with like somebody like me as opposed to like this asshole of a teacher. Yeah. And, to me, I would just be like, well, you're being a dick. So, <laughs> you know, that's why they're acting like that. Yeah. Have so. you ever seen the show The OA? No. No. Well, there's this one part in it where, I don't know, uh, to, for anyone that hasn't seen it, but basically they're talking about this one kid who's troubled. And this woman makes a point. It's like, arguably, you have more uh, to the teacher. She's talking to the teacher. She's like, you have more of a, of a commitment to help him than you do these other kids he's yeah. the kid that still needs saving like he's yeah. the kid that still yeah. needs someone to help guide him into yeah. what he's supposed to become or how he's supposed to become yeah it's like they push him off to the side yeah and then with the regular ones it's just like oh, okay you just got it it's like they focus so i don't know it's just like they focus so much on things that don't really create the character mm -hmm. of a person yeah like be a good person or treat i don't know like i just don't like the way it's run i'm not yeah. a big fan it, i don't you even know? know if it was intentional but it does feel like they're prepping you to have an office job yeah after. yeah no it is intentional <laughs> 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 they want you to have an office job yeah, you know something and like it i mean that's why like one of my nephews well a couple of my nephews wanted me to speak at their career day a few years ago and the one thing that did I did you yeah I did mm -hmm. I did and I did one before too like and all of them were elementary students and I just told them what you know like what I felt like is lacking I told them pursue their dreams pursue their goals you know had interaction with them asked them what they wanted to be encourage them told them that the journey is going to be difficult mm -hmm. that people are going to tell you otherwise that the people that you trust might even turn their back on you but if you believe in it if you know you can do it you need to do it you know just basically telling them like that's what it is yeah work hard yeah that yeah, yeah. so yeah. i mean because i know you don't get much of that these days in the educational no. system yeah encouragement in general seems like to be a really big mm -hmm. reoccurring like you don't do you know who jordan peterson is i do I've seen him on Joe Rogan's podcast. Have yeah. you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love him. I, I, I 
agree I, with a lot of his standpoints. I like and, I, did, I do. I like him. And he he comes out and says a lot because it's a lot of young males that that follow him, but also that's good. He talks about why he thinks that is, and one thing that he goes into is just how it like he starts crying when he talks about it. He's yeah. just like you would be so amazed at how many of these young men just need a little encouragement. It's right. like no one has encouraged them their entire life to become better or to yes. bear their bear their burden and, yes. and get some responsibility yes, within their yes, life. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. And um, it's amazing Like once you decide to take whatever it is that you want to take responsibility of right. when you work at something, how much better the relaxation time yeah, is yeah. because you worked hard. And you were, I mean, you do MMA, right? So training and working out, you instantaneously feel that. Yes. I mean, how much better is a day after um, you feel like you got work to the core wonderful. in a training session? <laughs> you know yeah, yeah i tell people all the time it's like because i went through a, a lot of depression anxiety ptsd from a right. car accident i was right. in and out of all the things that i do now for my for my mind state and my spirituality um like i meditate daily mm, I'm, I'm nice. in the sauna i, I nice. do a, i do a lot of things that i feel like feed my soul but yeah. there is nothing like a sparring or pad yeah. session that works me to exhaustion and yes. how my day is and my mood is right after that yeah it's yeah like, yeah it's i don't want to use the word torture but it's almost like you you've somehow put yourself through a certain kind of yes. hell yes and you feel proud of yourself yes. for making it through that yes. hell and now every the birds are nicer yes when they chirp, the sun's nicer and it's just those natural endorphins that you get too for sure yeah yeah Ah, uh, I you said something in there that I actually wanted to touch on, but I forget. But it was very well said. Everything that you just said, <laughs> oh, when it you. comes back to me, the I encouragement will, was it there? Ah, uh, no. Oh, <clears throat> no, because you were talking about like we're you know I was talking about the Kolohe ones, and you were talking about like these younger guys mm -hmm. just needing that encouragement and probably steeping them off. And I mean, I even take it as far as like um drug dealers like mm -hmm. if they actually like people would give them the opportunity like they're smart people yeah. they know how to, how, how to handle shit and stuff you know like yeah. they're very smart it's just that they got caught up in the wrong things if you put them like where they need to they'd be super productive oh for sure they the already hustle, are hustles on yeah. a different level you know so you know gary v no i don't he's this businessman he's like he's like all I want to do is hire drug dealers. He's like, drug dealers See? are, he's like, the, drug dealing <laughs> is the, the precursor for an all-star in, in sales later See? on. The, no, for real, yeah. though. No, for yeah, real. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've gotten into some trouble in the past. Like, I got kicked out of college for, I only ever, when I used to, not anymore, but yeah. I only ever used to hustle weed and mushrooms. That was oh, it. Okay, like, okay, I, okay. like, morally could not do anything, mm -hmm. just, like, give out anything more than that. But, I mean... Let's you on the very lowest level re up before you run out. I mean, Jesus Christ, you could implement that into <laughs> yeah. everything else in your life. Let me tell you, I never run out of coffee or uh, anything that I need because I know exactly. immediately when I need to get more. Exactly. You know, these small things that you pick, not yes. to mention human interactions. I yes. mean, you're dealing with everybody. Yes, no, you are. Yeah. You really are. So, it's, yeah, I know. No, yeah, because like I've, I know a few people close to me that have. Uh, de dealt to like harder drugs and stuff like that so i kind of been around uh, like not during the dealings but i i know like transactions and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah so i mean so that's what i mean by like i mean everybody's salvageable you know yeah. like even uh um even the people on the streets like i mean i don't look at anyone different you know like i could same. be in that same position as you are different circumstances yeah, yeah. you know so when we go back to like human nature and um, interaction and sometimes I just feel like people just walk past them. They don't, yeah. you know, they just, just, just dismiss them. Yeah. And that's not okay. That's not okay. In fact, it's quite wrong in my opinion. For I'm sure. not saying that like, you know, um, you, I mean, but we're taught to like, you know, help and give mm -hmm. service and like give back and, yeah, maybe if you give them money, they're going to do them for something, but I'm not going to judge, you know. I'll give you money to, like, do these things, but I don't know. I know I'm going off on a tangent and stuff like that, but it just kind of, that kind of, like, brings it, you know, into my thought process right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Go off on as many tangents as uh, you like. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, man. Yeah, but, yeah. The, so when, uh, so after I got in all that trouble, mind you, when I, when I got into trouble... I was uh, clean, 
completely clean. I had a right. 4.0 in the business school oh, at UMass okay. Amherst. I okay. was doing very well. I was very disciplined about my work and everything. So I get into trouble. And um, this is my first time offense, at least in, Ma- in Massachusetts. Yeah. So everything got resolved. Thank God I didn't go to jail. You know, if, mm, if mm-hmm. there, there's a bunch of reasons why I didn't. But one of the main ones, the best things my lawyer ever told me was, Samson, no one wants to go to war. But if you got to go to war, you want as much ammunition as possible. Uh, okay. Right. So by the time I was in court talking to the judge, which is like three or four months after I had gotten raided, I had like a folder this thick everything from transcripts to recommendation letters from the dean of the business school the chair of management everyone that mattered and and even just regular people that vouched for my character yeah and then so i and i had as much evidence as possible as like i'm a good person and then on top of it i was valeting cars at a hospital i was serving at a chili's i was running a painting company and i had enrolled myself in the community college so i'm before the judge like I have three jobs and I'm a student again. If you right. put me in jail, right. like, is this really the person right. that needs to go? Right. And so I think a lot of the kids that get in trouble, they, they, they're not, maybe they weren't lucky enough or right. aren't lucky enough to have someone right. tell them that and like take the initiative to the same initiative that got you in trouble. Take yes. that and go, yeah. go to make your case. Yeah. Because, the encouragement or, yeah. the, or the direction. Yeah. Or don't lose faith. Right. Yeah. Like, but the system, some things need to be changed. So going sure. back to the digital sure. age. Sure. So I get in trouble. I, I, I told myself the only thing I want to do, get back into UMass get on the boxing team, get on the radio. And yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for yeah. the two and a half, three years that I was, you know, going through it and fighting my way back in there, I that's every night when I would pray, those would be three of the things that would come right, up in my right, prayers. Right. And it was just so like, what a lesson on manifestation. Because what happened? I got back in, I got on the yeah. boxing team and I got on yeah. the radio and I graduated. And, you know, a bunch of lessons came after that. But when I graduated... So although my record had been completely cleared, Mm -hmm. um, I was on the news. So the news article still came up when you type my name in online. Yeah. I got, so I would, uh, I had five interviews for different companies. And these are companies that are like literally uh, three to five interviews per company to get there. I'd beat out all the competition wow. like uh i'll never forget hubspot is a company in boston they make uh, crm software they, they have 150 kids in the room it came down to three kids they were hiring two they love me they love me so much and then that was the only one so they all would tell me they they would out of nowhere they would just be like we're going with someone else um we think you're too entrepreneurial okay what? that was their way of saying you know we found out what happened and we can't say that your background check came up bad because it didn't it came up fine but if we type in your name it's still on there so i think a conversation more conversations need to be have about when like if something happens to a kid like should a kid be prevented from getting a job in his 20s because at 15 he spray painted a wall or something like that right, and then there's right. a news article or something right. that still comes up online yeah you know like are you you you're not different at all you haven't changed at all like right you know the, yeah i feel like it hinders a lot of people and you have to pay a lot of money to get those things covered yeah. up yeah you know, it's like a minimum of a couple grand sheesh yeah no i mean a change is possible for anyone for mm-hmm. sure you know what i mean and like you said like what people don't change people do change they yeah, can some definitely pe- some people just don't want to yeah. you know they're stuck in their ways or they're too prideful or they're too like narcissistic or whatever it may be but I mean, if you're like humble enough to like recognize and like, you know, take responsibility and, you know, acknowledge the things that, you know, you did wrong, mm-hmm. then then change is always possible. So, like, I mean, it um, going back to what you said, yeah, like for somebody who's like 15 years old and then like now they're in their early 20s, like you're getting docked for something many, you know, five, six years ago that like you really should kind of, yeah, figure out a way to like, n- I don't know the past is a past you know like obviously it's a past but like get to know them now see what kind of character they have like you know like i don't know but But then they'll tell you oh we're we're hiring people and listen everyone no one else got this and you do yeah 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 and it's just i i learned something interesting once so 
in sales, they say that um, people are always primarily operating on one motivational driver. Mm -hmm. There's the drive to bond, the drive to acquire, the drive to learn, and the drive to defend. And one of the most interesting things that, and so someone will always be operating on one of those more than all the rest. But one thing I thought was really interesting and is uh, the drive to defend. So Mm. there's a lot of people that some people may say are lazy or that lack motivation, but in actuality, they're, they're extremely motivated, but they're just operating on the, the, uh, the, the drive to defend their way of life. Right. So it's not, it's not that they're not motivated. They're actually very motivated. They just don't want their life to change in a certain way that they they don't seem they don't think they would get happiness from or right. they wouldn't like to do right yeah. right and uh i thought that was like an interesting way to look at things for sure yeah um gosh uh you you talk about that i i it's i think sometimes people are like caught in this perception of like oh so you go here you, you know you go to school mm-hmm. then you go to college then you get a job mm-hmm. And like, I don't know, I never went, I went to college, but I left twice, you know, it's just community <laughs> college. Mm-hmm. But like my attitude was like, I'm paying for it. I'm not going to go. I didn't want to go. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, you know, and um, sometimes it, it, you, you you live outside of the box. Like you don't need to like, you know, like do these things or do these steps because why? Because society says so. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I. I've kind of always been one not to like go with society, as you can tell, like the social media <laughs> thing and stuff. So yeah. like, I mean, that was kind of the same concept there. I had tried college, but I just wasn't interested. I only went to uh, my acting classes. Oh, okay. Yeah, because at one you point, you act too. I I had done some, yeah, okay. um, more theater, and I actually had got like one of I was so, so I had wanted to pursue act like when I was younger too. After um, that's actually a gap actually. So uh, the whole Taekwondo thing happened and then I got injured and then I lost motivation. And besides the partying and stuff like that, I went to college because I was trying to pursue acting now. That was like my other passion besides martial arts. So it was mm-hmm. another art. It was just, you know, yeah. acting. So I did that for a bit. And I remember um, uh, it was a pretty, uh, um, not big. I mean, it was pretty big. I mean, it was pretty cool. But I had auditioned for this one role that, like, I read through it. It was like a Greek mythology kind of a thing. Different stories within the, within the, um, th- you know, the play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So reading through it, then I came across this one character that I really gravitated towards. And I just auditioned. And I know there's a couple of, like, returnees that was going for that same role. And... I mean, I got it. <laughs> that <laughs> it was like my first time, you know, like auditioning and stuff like that. I got it. I, I mean, I, I nailed it, you know. And I had done a couple like other um, other plays for the my acting class, you know, like some, um, I forget what it's called, but uh, showcases. Yeah. Okay. Some showcases and <coughs> uh, had done like that. And um, I got selected to be like, one of the students from the year to be in a certain showcase so that one was pretty was pretty interesting because um it was about this girl and she i was really drawn to like darker roles at Mm -hmm. that time so this one was about this girl she had gotten raped or whatever and she was pregnant but she was angry at god so i was like okay well how am i gonna do this monologue and like you know, you work with the the teacher, the director, whatever you want to call them. You're doing it on stage, and how you're gonna like do certain steps, make certain things at certain times, so that it's more like you know, like Believe impactful. Yeah. 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 And then, um, so I have my Bible because I'm a Mormon, but you know, like I we have like I didn't have the Book of Mormon. I just had my um Bible, and I put fake paper inside. So at a certain time, in the monologue towards the end, like. I remember like oh i know what i'm gonna do so i put fake paper inside and then i opened the book right and i'm like mad at god i'm like he took my this from me he took my this start ripping the paper mm-hmm. <laughs> he literally hear the crowd That's like <gasps> you know like you yeah, hear them yeah, gasping because yeah. i'm like ripping it and stuff mm-hmm. and then at the end i say like f god i won't say that now but you know <laughs> i did at the time mm-hmm. i say f god <laughs> and i drop the bible and i just turn and walk away 
and I literally nobody like clapped. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, Sounds powerful though. Yeah, no, no, nobody <laughs> clapped because they were so like shocked. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like they were so like, oh my gosh, like it was so realistic for them. But then they ended up clapping afterwards. Mm. But like it was just like pretty intense that they're just like, oh my gosh, we didn't know what to like, yeah. you know what to do, like whether <laughs> to clap or cheer. Like this, that was pretty like intense. Like yeah, how you said. Yeah. So I had some some good moments at the community college or my theater and um yeah so i had done a little bit of dabbling with that and then i went into like just tv uh classes like i would go to class like over here and that was a little bit different because theater is like so much more like bigger and you got to be louder and like bigger motion so i had yeah. to learn how to be more subtle and stuff like that and I did a little mini showcase and got on like a little clip it of the newspaper like they wrote about me. It was a super long time ago. This was like maybe, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago or oh, something okay. like that. Yeah, it was a really long time ago. But um, somehow found my way back. Then that's part of the gap. Mm -hmm. Then found my way back to my Taekwondo gym and, you know, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> any Any similarities walking on stage to do something like theater and the feeling that you get walking into the ring or are they dramatically different oh that's a good question i feel like um the only similarity is just right before it happens just kind of like that that excited nervousness mm -hmm. you know like preparing and like just kind of running through the motions thing you know like you know mm -hmm. so that part is similar but like um after that it, you know, <laughs> it gets very different yeah yeah it gets yeah, very yeah. different but like yeah. the pre in in terms of preparation yeah like in terms of preparation feeling feeling that excitement and mm -hmm. all of that stuff that that i would say is probably the same you yeah. know so yeah then the night before a fight do you sleep well? yeah you um sleep well now i do um well my last invicta fight i i think it's because of the time difference that's what stuff. you're in right now right yeah correct yeah. Because of the time difference, I had a hard time sleeping, but... Where was it? In um, Kansas City. Okay. Yeah, Kansas City. How many days before the fight did you get there? Well, we got there on Monday, but I was already having a hard time adjusting yeah. to the time frame in general. Flights in general are kind of yeah. hard. Yeah. So, um, but it's funny you mentioned that. Like, in the beginning of my fight career, like, we're talking about amateur, like, okay, you're on fight. Like, literally, when I find out I have a fight... This is the beginning, like weeks out. I'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't sleep. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we we're talking a couple weeks out. Then as you do it more, then it's just like, okay, so it's like a week out, you know, mm -hmm. and then it starts to kick in and you just start to do it a little bit more. Then it's like a couple of days and then it starts to kick in where I ha get this whatever anxious or can't sleep. Then it got to the point where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm sleeping. What's going on? Like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 what's yeah. going on with me? I'm like at the, I'm at the Blaisdell right now and I'm not like freaking out, not like mm. freaking out, but like, yeah. you know, like I just like pretty chill, calm and collected. So I think like throughout my journey, you learn how to harness that nervousness. Yep. You're still going to have it because <clears> it's good for, it's good for you to have. It keeps you aware, you know, it keeps you on your game, but I've learned how to like, harness it mm -hmm. and i've also learned that um it's natural to feel that way because before like when i would feel that way like i would be hard on myself yeah. i'd be like oh why are you feeling like this you know like all this stuff or like thinking like oh but if i go out there and look stupid mm -hmm. and blah 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 and then the more you do it and then the more fights you watch and you realize that oh my gosh i'm just as good as you or maybe even better then it make, gives me more confidence yeah. i know i'm kind of like judging no, some not other fighters but i'm just like well it makes sense right because you know. people talk about imposter syndrome where they feel like um whatever it is that they're going after or working on like that they deep down they feel they might feel like they don't deserve it or that they shouldn't right. be there or they shouldn't get the limelight right, or right, the respect right, for it right but how you know like anything when it comes to building confidence the more you do something yes. the harder you work at it the yes. more a little bit more comfortable that you feel yes yeah. yes it got to that point of comfort like even with the whole invicta um just that whole week it just went very smoothly mm -hmm. you know i just felt comfortable i had a couple i had an interview with tj um yeah, it just it just went as well as well could be, you know. I took it in stride, and I w I knew I was already ready for that moment, so that's probably what it was too. But yeah, I mean, just 
just like getting all the like funny business out of your head mm-hmm. and you know that i think that's one of the m- hardest things to do but you can learn how if you can learn how to do that and channel it then i don't know you can go far yeah, <laughs> like get the i like the saying like even you can get the fear to push you from behind instead of standing in front yeah, of yeah 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 for yeah. sure for sure do you yeah. have any rituals that you follow <coughs> when you know you're about to like ways that you like your week to go or you huh. know is there you follow a specific diet routine well, or is there for sure like um the diet and stuff like that like my nutritionist helps me throughout the week and like you got to drink a certain amount of water mm-hmm. and not have like too much sodium because you got to cut that water you know and <coughs> the food intake but for me i like the only thing that i like is for it to be as normal as normal can be mm-hmm. you know the more normal my day is the more comfortable i feel and that, at the end of the day that's all i want is to feel comfortable yeah i feel comfortable i get in there i feel comfortable then i'm ready to go for it's it's i don't know it's kind of weird but that's just the way i feel like mm. i don't really like changing anything or having a specific ritual i just like yeah you know yeah just well i guess in some ways that is the ritual yeah right? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 Certain true people, true yeah. true yeah. yeah um other than that i guess the only thing is like my parents are always there so that's an that's like uh, they're supportive they've yeah, always been yeah yeah for sure for sure nice so like they've always been in my fights so i don't know if you call that a ritual but like that's kind of like a thing that needs to happen mm-hmm. and i usually get like a blessing from my dad and my brother before i go you know just like they you know they we, we pray and stuff like that and then i oh i do pray before mm-hmm. i fight like before i go off like i'll pray at my like my team or whoever's there and then with my parents and stuff so that that's my ritual i yeah. pray you know so yeah you're, <laughs> you're pretty religious right uh i i wouldn't say religious but yeah i mean i mean i'm like in my faith i guess you could say yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you always been had um, a close tie to that yeah yes and no like i've had my moments like as i said earlier i'm a, I'm a latter you know i'm mormon but you know, people know us as lds or d- many different things i don't know but um, you grew up that way yeah yeah i did but uh i there's been moments where i like you know was less um less active and stuff like that and mm-hmm. um yeah you know but i think for me more so now it's just the connection that i have with god which I feel since the pin pandemic or whatever has happened, um, I f- do feel like I kind of slack slack there. So I kind of gotta get better with that. But yeah, just mainly like my connection with God and um, just my own personal self checking and mm-hmm. you know betterment overall well, well you know well being and stuff. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because like, when people say religious, I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I'm, like, pretty religious. I know I, I am strong in my faith, and I know I I do certain things. Like, I pray, you know. It may not be, like, morning and night, but, mm-hmm. like, I pray or just have conversations with God or meditate or whatever it may be. So, you know, I read the scriptures. I, um, Yeah, so, yeah, just stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. It, it came up in... Um with Valen when we were talking in the last podcast just oh, yeah. how like like um I feel like my God or whatever you want to call it my relationship yeah. with him her whatever yeah. has is is just been getting stronger and I feel like my days are always better when I pray before bed the night before there you go like they just yeah. they tend to go better and I feel like if anything whether you took the religious this part out of it right, or not right, right. it's like a form of manifestation or yeah. it's a it's a time period that you've actually devoted towards being positive yeah. or wanting yeah. more positive things to yeah. come um or at least speaking out loud or in your mind at least uh what you want in life what you right. want to be better at right right um, right what you want for other people right yeah type of a yeah. Thing. yeah yes i i agree with you 100 percent for sure yeah and i felt like <clears throat> I, I'm not gonna lie. The when I really started to make it a practice is also when a lot, a lot of things went wrong. Right. You know, like it, usually it, me it, too. Me it too. Took things going wrong before yeah. I could get into it, and then it's kind of that. How do I make sure 
that I don't lose that when things are going right. right. You know, that I don't suck on that yes, when things are going yes, right. Yes, you know? yes, because that's when we're supposed to hold on to it is exactly. when things are going going right, not mm-hmm. only when it's going bad. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, we human, God understands <laughs> that. And I, he, I, even if people only go to God for those mm-hmm. rough times, at least they're still going. And exactly. then hopefully it gets to the point where they will continuously go even when you're when you're in the good moments mm-hmm. too, as it should be. Yeah. But I mean, I I kind of tend to do that too, so I know exactly what you're talking about. So yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed too. Like uh, I feel like. I mean, I pay attention to it a lot in in MMA, but. Um, I feel like some of the highest competitors also have a pretty strong relationship with their faith. Right, right, right. Like when two top-notch athletes get into the ring, yeah. a lot of the times I feel like the one that people know, like, oh, they have a very strong relationship with their faith mm-hmm, mm-hmm. tends to win. <laughs> right, right. And not always, but I yeah. feel like that happens a, a lot, <laughs> especially when you're competing at a very high level. Right, right. You know? No, I mean, I don't think you're wrong there. Yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, with that being said, it's not like it's cheating or something. You know, For sure. Just, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. And even if it is, it's not yeah. like steroids, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I do. Um, that's kind of always been my, I get, yeah, I am very strong in my faith in that sense of um, just uh, praying and mm-hmm. all of that stuff. So, yeah, I, I feel you on that. And I do think sometimes, well, like, look at Max. He's pretty strong in his faith, you know, yeah. Max Holloway. Yeah. And, I mean, he went pretty far. He still is doing a great job. So I Definitely mean, one of the greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there you go. That's mm-hmm. an example. But also, at the same time, God does not discriminate. So mm-hmm. you, there are also very high-level athletes that do not believe in him. And, yeah. you know, he still blesses them. So yeah. yeah. I think a lot of it, too, has to do with, even if you took, like, religion and the word God out of the picture, it's mm-hmm. kind of like... If you thought about it just with truth, it's like someone told me once, like, all you can do is be aware and then try to be better. But first you need to be aware. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. you're ignorant to something that you're doing wrong, I don't know if you're going to be as harshly, um, right. if if we're saying that God's real, right? right. As harshly punished right. for doing something wrong. But if you're aware that you think something that you're doing is wrong and you're not working towards becoming better yeah. or trying to fix it, that's when I feel like yeah. things start to go the wrong way. Yes. Um, that's the pride and the narcissism mm-hmm. and being into yourself and thinking that you're perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's like one of the hugest flaws you can have mm-hmm. as a human being is thinking that way, yeah. which... I people do think that way <coughs> you know what i mean it's crazy that they're out there but they are out there you yeah, know we had a president like that yeah <laughs> so there you go like you know it's just i um yeah so for me like i just think that people need to be humble mm-hmm. and they need to um you know just just be self-reflective more than anything i think so when you do that, um, uh, then you should have that improvement that you're looking for, for sure. So, yeah, for yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, I'm curious, what does your team look like right now? My as, team? Yeah, as far as when you're getting ready for a fight, what kind of people do you have in, in place to, to help you to help you get there? Oh, man, I got, well, I obviously, you know, Benji, mm-hmm. you know. Um, him, I, one of my other teammates, uh, Nalu, but I call him Brubs cause he's like my brother. So I just call him Brubs. Uh, I don't know. I, I, there's some that are consistent like them. And then there's just some other people that we, I, I work with whoever, you know, as long mm-hmm. as I'm putting in the work, uh, right now I'm at Hawaii elite. So I've been getting some good time in with Russell Doan. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know who he is. I, but uh, just through through you and yeah. like going through you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, if you actually like look some of his fights up, he's pretty badass, you mm-hmm. know. So um, I've been getting some work in with Russell and um, but I've from because I've been doing that for a really long time. So I mean, I in a sense like everybody has contributed to where I am right now, you know. So like. 
I mean, everybody's on my team. Nah, yeah, just yeah. kidding. Um, but you have a nutritionist? I do have a nutritionist that we usually um, sync up for when I'm fight camp and stuff like that. She lives, oh gosh, I want I want to say, I know it's, they had to drive a few hours to get to Kansas City. I don't know where she lives, but I know she oh, lives so in the not No, yeah, okay. not here. So I have her, I have my manager, um, just my teammates, like really good teammates that I m- met along the way. Some of them s- are still with me. Some of them, you know, um, come and go. Doing, yeah, Stop some of them come and go. So in answer to your question, I don't know, my team is just, it, it varies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the main, my main team has always been my Ohana. So mm-hmm. there, that is what my team looks like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that adds to quality of life. The fact that yeah. you have family with you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they may not train with me, but, um, they've been the backbone, you know, for that. So, um, yeah, I mean, mm. so, I mean, I, I know I didn't really answer your question, but that's kind of my team. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's funny when s- s- fighters have such a, so one fighter compared to another can have such a different, different way answer. that they prep for, yeah. yeah different answer different way that they prep yeah. for something um like i always think it's funny how it, when john jones was on his tear he would just be like if i'm not partying the week before <laughs> he's like i'm not gonna do well he's like yeah that guy would go out every day before a fight and i feel like something about it's the, so crazy yeah the like uh a, tension or mm. community element of whatever he was doing right. like gave him a boost right rather right, right. Than where a lot of people be like i can't do that like i'm not going to perform well if i do that and for him it worked right yeah. right right no yeah so it's definitely different for everybody yeah yeah no that's true i mean some people can like freaking like hard spar all the way i was up gonna ask the you about that of, yeah i have not hard sparred in years many years yeah, yeah. especially it's getting some light on it after max you know? yeah and, and thank goodness he brought that up yeah but and coming from someone that had very severe head trauma at one point in time in their life yeah. like <laughs> it's yeah. like what well, you're like why don't you go and fight? listen I, I hit my head really hard before yeah. i don't know if i yeah. need any more of that i i've been fortunate i haven't had like super bad i've had like very slight concussions not from like, fighting or something no else. just training yeah and um it was spaced out so it happened like maybe on one or two occasions but um even before max said that like i had not hard sparred in many 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 years because I don't know. I just, um, like you said, some light was being shed on it. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, that um, that I just kind of took that approach. Like, uh, grappling was fine. I could grapple really hard, like wrestling and stuff like that. And you got to consider, too, like wrestling sometimes when you get taken down, you're kind of like hitting, you know, yeah, you hit the you head. Hit head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you have that to factor in, like, why are you going to add more punches to it? Mm-hmm. So, and I had done so much hard sparring on for a lot of my, like, life that, I know what it's like to get hit. Mm -hmm. I feel like if in the beginning of your career, hard sparring is, is, is kind of unnecessary, unnecessary, but, but with that being said, I wouldn't even promote it like once a week. I would promote Mm -hmm. it maybe like once a month kind of a thing, just so that they can get the feel. They know they're getting hit, you know, more than anything. Cause you really don't need to take too much damage for sure. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, I, went into that fight not so hard sparring at all and i mean i felt better than ever yeah to be honest with you you know and i mean just looking forward to getting in mm. there more and more so you know yeah do you have a fight lined up right now uh there's been a couple of fights that um had not panned out for another promotion a fairly big promotion i can't really say you yeah, know because yeah. big stuff but it was it was a fairly big promotion against uh fairly like known up and comer but it didn't pan out for different reasons at different times it was either their camp or my camp or you know but i believe that at some point in time that one might come to fruition no i i feel like it will come to fruition and um we're just waiting on invicta right now i i know that uh they had left ufc fight pass but from what i've gathered the platform that they're moving to are going to allow them to have more fights. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be good for us because we are contracted with them. And the beauty about Invicta is 
they they allow you to fight for other promotions as well. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so huge. I do have a, f- I still have a four fight contract with them, mm-hmm. but they still allow you to fight in different promotions. So hopefully, I mean, it's in the talking. I talk with my manager and stuff. We're just kind of, you know, waiting for things to settle. And then obviously, like, the whole thing happened with COVID and everything like that. And they had asked me after my fight in February and then the whole COVID hit, they had asked me to fight, like, a couple months after, like, when COVID was still new. And for me at the time, I have my different thoughts and things on COVID now, but at that time i wasn't like willing to take the chance and Mm. stuff but knowing what i know now i probably would have but it's okay it is what it is you know things happen for a reason and yeah you know um so yeah i feel like something's gonna happen here just gotta just gotta be patient yeah and i was patient like prior to this last fight i was out for five years oh wow yeah um <clears throat> and I went through a different mental battles with that too, like almost maybe giving up at times because I was just like, oh, is this really for me? You know, it's been long. I didn't have a fight. I didn't have my manager for all of that five years. I had him for like maybe like I say a couple years now. I don't know. But um, during that time, now that I look at it, it was actually a blessing in disguise because I didn't take a lot of damage, damage, you know, Mm -hmm. I was out for different reasons. Like I had gotten like a couple knee injuries, um, slight concussions. A lot of it was just me dealing with my, my substance abuse thing, but, um, I didn't really take any head damage. So now that looking back on it and yeah, I, you know, I thought like, oh man, I'm not going to be relevant anymore because I'm not fighting. It was actually a blessing in disguise. Mm-hmm. Then I came back to fight. And honestly, like, it's the best I've ever felt ever, ever. So things happen for a reason, you know? Yeah. And now I'm just like, you know, I've been out for over a year from a fight. and But I don't know. Like, for me, my thought process is, like, I sometimes get impatient. But at the same time, I'm like, all right, well, I've been out way longer than this. And I went in and smashed. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, I know I'm going to smash the next time I go in. So whatever, you know? Yeah. But... <clears throat> I mean, it would be nice to, like, start getting it picked up again for, like, you know, just to, like, build my resume to get up there so I can get to, like, you know, a, a higher level, yeah. uh, different promotion. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And do you think having the manager has helped a lot? Oh, big yeah. time. Big time. Yeah. Um, He helps me find sponsorships, Uh, just takes care of helping me find fights. I don't have to worry about all of that stuff. I just focus on the training part and mm. which and is huge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what you should be focused on. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. oh yeah, having a manager, the right manager to the a manager that's not going to just like throw you under the bus or put you in a fight just so that you know, it's like okay, like they can put you into a fight that it's not a good matchup and you they know that you're probably going to lose, but they do it because it's like a really good promotion, yeah. you know, so to speak. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not your best interest. Yeah, it's mm. not your best interest. Like, they just want it because it's a big promotion. Mm-hmm. But they more than likely know that you have no freaking business being in there right <laughs> now. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 it's a blessing for sure, my manager. So, I yeah. went through some interesting, man, like, almost close to managers before him. But then I found him. So, yeah. And just way better? Way better, for sure. Yeah. Um, just way better. <laughs> yeah, and how are the sponsorship things working out? I mean, I'm. It's one of the things I'm going for with this. Yeah, right? yeah, just yeah, yeah. So that I'm not driving myself into the ground financially. It'd yeah. be nice to have something coming back. But yeah, uh, for the most part, I'm relatively uneducated on it all. So even from like your perspective, are you are you getting okay money, or is it money, or well, is it just products, or um, during my fight fight, I had gotten good like decent sponsor money Mm -hmm. for sure uh some of it was products but since then um you know since i don't have any fight lined up you know i my income is just from my other my other job that i'm doing right now Mm -hmm. but um when we did do it i he had done some i had done some you know just kind of push it out there like i got a couple like local sponsors and he had done most of the work though so um I think with that, I mean, I wish I could, like, 
have like that income of sponsorship so that I wouldn't have to worry about like this job. But mm. at the same time, you know, I got to reach that level in order to make that happen for myself and it's gonna come so you know definitely yeah um so yeah i wish i could give you more insight on the sponsorship thing but i can always like you know message text message yeah i was just curious yeah and then because they're out there uh, they're out there you know what i mean you just gotta you just gotta look yeah it was um i'm talking to a couple people in hawaii about it okay and uh i feel like you know, you'll be a part of the first four. And then yeah. after that, I mean, I live here now, so it's going to yeah. be more and more. And I, f- I feel like it's probably a little bit easier to build a, a home audience here than maybe in a lot of other places in the right. world. Because here, you know, there's certain hours where it's only Hawaii that's away. Right, right, right. You know, and just, right. you know, that's, I feel like it's a pretty small community after mm-hmm, a little while mm-hmm. yeah. you start running into people that know other people that you know it's much more frequent whereas like in boston there you know there's people consistently in and out of boston and new york and there's the borders of several other states you right, know it's right. here it's like the people that live here are the people that right. are here you right know, people visit but that's only for a short period of time yeah i you know a lot of my sponsorships came from some of my friends too <laughs> like yeah. they just all like to, oh, yeah. you know like to be on my banner and stuff mm-hmm. so yeah that was a huge help and then he had like um found like other sponsorships and stuff so but if i do here i will let you know yeah yeah, yeah for reals know. for reals i will yeah you know i mean you gotta help i feel like you gotta help give back you know definitely so whatever we can do to help is that's what you know yeah i mean it's part of why i started this like i've gone through some shit in my life and then there i'd have these conversations and i would just be like you know if one person that was dealing with something similar that i was dealing with right could could have heard the conversation i just have right i would have saved them years of bullshit yeah you know yeah. whether it comes to substance stuff or depression stuff it's just there are yeah. just some things that you need to know you're not alone in right or that someone right. else sh- can show you that it's possible um, True. and then back to the whole social media thing and people having less of community now it's right it's like if you're not consistently synthesizing your thoughts with other people sometimes you're alone in your room and you don't realize how similar most of the shit you're going through a lot yes, of other people are yes. going through too no it's true it's true and and what you got to realize too is social media people can post whatever bullshit yeah, they it's want the highlight reel yeah mm-hmm. you know what i mean like that's why like when i post stuff like i'm really well i'm not really into makeup anyways in general <laughs> unless i really gotta gotta but like when i post stuff it's just like me training or me you know whatever like you know i, I am who i am mm-hmm. it is what it is like i don't know that's who i am i don't want to like give any like false narratives yeah. or you know like you know like oh you look like that but then in real life you look like this mm-hmm. kind of i don't know but I, and then again though i'm just comfortable with me and who i am and it took me a long time to get to that point you know so yeah. um i mean i wasn't always like that and it, and there's still things that i still got to get comfortable with within myself mm-hmm. but as far as like wearing like a shit ton of makeup like how i used to in the past like i'm so over that i'm just <laughs> saying uh uh-uh. unless it's for some kind of thing where you guys need me to do like a photo shoot then you hire your makeup artist you guys come do something to me mm-hmm. we'll do it <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. whatever or like Oh, I don't even need a makeup artist because I just use like my mom or my aunties and like they are really great at doing hair and makeup. So I don't even need makeup artists. Mm-hmm. So unless it's for something like that, then I really just I'm pretty much as natural as natural can be. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's better that way. You have less <laughs> it's things. Like to the hi- it's not a highlight reel, but you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. And like when I post, like my manager's always like, oh, you got to post more, you know, so that like invicta can see but i'm just like i know but it's just so hard because like i really like don't post like yeah if, you know like I'll well 100 percent, i could come to the gym sometime with um where is it see that thing that the camera's on yeah yeah okay so that's just like such a helpful little expensive ass fucking tool because yeah because when the camera's on that it's always smooth and i could a hundred percent just get some footage okay that is like 
quality okay. looking footage so like oh, that's cool so then all it could just be is you hitting pads and you put a quote because the posting thing it can be exhausting yeah, i know very I know. exhausting and Gosh. like the aesthetic appealing of it all yeah like, yeah yeah like uh i'm not sure if you saw the podcast instagram but i'm very big on i want like once this becomes something mm-hmm. one day mm-hmm. i want people to be able to scroll to the bottom and see the mess that it was right right you know, right, like right right he's trying to figure it out like yeah here, yeah, here is he, yeah he tried it this way he tried yeah. it that way and you see understandably so a lot of artists now specifically like the music ones or models they do this thing where it's like they take away all the posts except for the ones that are yeah. achieving the best right. results right and then it's just a it's a very small amount and i mean i get it but i think the way that i'm i've structured myself like morally and what matters to me yes. and the values yes. is I want you to see when I looked like shit. Yeah. When it yeah. looked like shit when yeah. I didn't know what yeah. I was doing, yeah. when it sounded bad, you know? Yeah. Like no, I, want I, agree. You, I want people to see that because that's the other thing. The society now is everything needs to be now, now, yes. now, now, now. It, it yes. takes a bit, anything that matters takes years Very of hard work time. in order yeah. to make it all work out. It does. No, it does for real. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm not the same fighter I was 10 years ago or like 15 years ago. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I, that is a good point to bring up because you, every time people usually only see the end result mm-hmm. and what you're showing is from the beginning to the end. But also, I think um, it helps you reflect back too and it keeps you grounded because sometimes people reach that level of success and they become very different, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So... And success isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. But it's like how you handle the su- how you handle the success, and and then always reflecting. And you now you have that for yourself. You know you have that footage. You can go back. You can look. Oh, this is where we started. Mm-hmm. This is where we are now. Look how amazing it's been. Look at the progression from this video to that video to that video, mm-hmm. and look at where we are now. Like booming and everything. But then like yeah, keeping that that humbleness. And kind of like with my videos and stuff like that too, like um, not the ones I post on Instagram, which like you're a video editor, but you probably like look at my videos and like, oh my gosh. But I try my best, <laughs> like on this action editor on mm-hmm. my phone, like I try my best to put together decent videos with music and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like I do okay, you know, but um, yeah, it's like, re- like I, I may not have everything on footage like you, but I do like reflect on like this moment in time and the type of fighter that I was then type of fighter that i am now but more importantly the type of person that i was then the type of person that i am now and i um i just i don't know i think that it helps a lot and um but yeah i mean i maybe went off on a tangent again but like you know it's just just, you know kind of completely agree you got to be able to i mean it's so powerful to have some perspective in it all and to be able to look back it's kind of like you know, when you're work, if you're when someone's working at a uh, like a physical fitness yeah, or health yeah, type, type of yeah. goal, it's like every day you look in the mirror and you're getting a little bit better, yeah. but you don't really notice yes. it because you're seeing yes. it every day. So yes. if you only are filling your mind up with where you're at right now when you're never taking the time to look back yeah. it kind of doesn't give you don't give yourself as much credit that's for how true. far that that's you've so actually true. come yeah yeah that's true and then i don't know why i'm thinking about this but um right when i got out of corporate so corporate fucked me up like i health wise i was yeah. not in a good place like yeah. i gained a bunch of weight and everything so if you go on my personal instagram if you go down a little bit there's this picture of me i'm at the gym and I like, you know, I got this like pose, like this, like flexing pose or whatever. Yeah. Now I look back on that picture now and I look at that picture and I go, well, I am not in good, sh- <laughs> good shape at all. But that day I thought I looked so fucking good. And I've, <laughs> and I've talked to, and, I, and, but it, but it was a mental thing. Yes, it was because yes, that yes. For, for so long I wasn't doing what I knew I should have been doing. Yeah. I was ignoring this thing that said, you need to get out. You need to get out of that job. You need to pay more attention to your health. Yeah. But it was just rem- 
remarkable how after a few months of actually yes. focusing on what I knew I should be focusing on, how like when I look at that picture now and I go, dude, like physically, you don't look like you're in that great shape at all. But like I would if I look like that now, I would not post that mm -hmm. picture. Like mm -hmm. I'd, I'd think about it too much. But I remember that day I was so proud of myself. And it just goes to show you how much um, mental work is involved in the journey right. as well. No, you know? that's true. But post it anyways. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, def <laughs> I definitely do. But it's just like in, in looking back on it, I'm just like, wow, how much there I must have been ignoring. So or just, right. you know, like having stuff take a back seat that should have been yeah. right, right in the front. Yeah. You know, to pay, paying attention to. Correct. Because um, I'll like people. I know some people that are struggling with weight stuff or whatever and i bring that story up to them i yeah. was like <laughs> i was like look yeah. at this picture i was like i thought yeah everything i thought i felt i felt so good and right. that's the most important part and i think um for people with any goal it's like like i think depression in general mm -hmm. is 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 a bunch of things that you yeah. know you should be working on or that yes. you want to do better that go to the wayside so if you like showed the brain and it was like i should be spending more time with family and friends but i'm not and it shows like this burn, right, burn right, on the right, brain right, right. and like i should be eating healthier and it shows a burn on the brain the funny thing is is like you don't need to be an Olympic champ or in the best shape ever. Yeah. But if you're just putting a little bit of work towards that one area, yeah. it could be like work this big, but a burn this big, but the burn goes away yeah. with a little bit of work just because you are trying yes. to get better. Yes. You're putting a little bit yes. of effort into that area. Yeah. And uh, I feel like depression is just like this overwhelming sensation of a bunch of things that, you know, a lot of times it might not be that, you have like a chemical imbalances you're living a depressed ass life you right, know like right, you're actually right, right. living something that right. most people would not be right. satisfied with if they were living yeah yeah you know? no i see what you're saying yeah sometimes it's a chemical imbalance sometimes it's just uh the circumstances mm -hmm. and what you've somehow created for yourself without maybe even knowing yeah. you know but yeah i i feel you on depression i i had struggled with depression myself for uh different reasons and i think some of that's probably why I would use too is because I didn't like the uncomfortable feeling of depression mm -hmm. and I wanted to mask it with like substances and stuff. And like then that. it's just a, a vicious cycle. Yeah. Vicious cycle mm -hmm. for sure. So, I mean, um, definitely the depression has been better, but sometimes it, there's your triggers and stuff definitely. like that. So like it, it can like arise, mm -hmm. you know, from time to time with certain things. Like, I mean, re just as of recently, like, I mean, I hit a little bit of de of a depression wave because like we lost a really like really good family member last week, and she was an auntie, but she was an auntie that I was like really close to, and I mean just just like really good person. Yeah, I'm so sorry. it's just like yeah, it just kind of happened all of a sudden. We lost her to cancer, you know. Um, I just I and I'm super close with her, um, my cousins, you know, her children, and I just man just i they it's just an unfair situation for for me to still kind of like deal with and stuff mm -hmm. like that and i cannot even imagine what they must be feeling you know it must be a hundred times worse than what i'm feeling and that sucks you mm -hmm. know it just really 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 sucks uh but god has his reasons i'm sure and i mean you know it, it is what it is and i mean we all know that she's in a better place for mm. sure but it's still a hard one to take for sure you know it's not like she was old or anything like still like in her younger like just turning 70 or something like that mm. but i mean st to me 70 is still pretty young now yeah. you know what i yeah. mean <laughs> like people can live to 100 now. Yeah. yeah so like to me like we just yeah it was very unexpected i think that's one of the things is very un unexpected and it happened within a matter of months um I guess the, some of the blessings, though, is, like, she lasted longer than most people. It's stage four pancreatic cancer had lasted, you know, and all the it cancer just went everywhere. It went everywhere. So, I mean, yeah, unfortunate. But, yeah. you know, like I said, sometimes situations like this bring up those, like, depression waves and stuff like that. So, but, you know, it, I mean, it, it it's life. And that's, that, uh, I mean, that's just life, you know, mm. like, that's the beauty of life but also the hardships of life that 
everyone needs to face because I mean everyone goes at some point and mm -hmm. you know you know yeah. yeah sorry for your loss yeah I mean we are too uh, it's, just, yeah. it's a lot of uh time and strong will mm -hmm. you know if I I've experienced a lot of loss in my life and uh I think people knew that when I was growing up so people people tend to open up to me in yeah, general yeah, yeah. Um, but when people knew that like uh the first girl i ever loved died when i was like 16 oh, man. right so and then then our town was yeah, just plagued rough. with um overdoses and car accidents and i was growing up those are the two things and like now getting older it seems to still be overdoses but when i was younger it was the combination of the two but whenever i talk to someone whatever really difficult grief like situation yeah. comes in it's i i'm very blunt and honest it's like you're you're gonna be sad you're yeah. gonna feel like shit you yeah. know tomorrow that might not be that great and the day yeah. after might not either it's yeah. just time and strong will like things you know it takes a while but sometimes you got to get low to get through you got to yeah. experience those lows i mean that's part of like some of the lessons in life and you you can't yeah. there's no way to ignore it yeah and there's know? no way around it either because mm -hmm. like you will always experience grief on some level which kind of sucks mm -hmm. really bad like yeah. it's not even fun you know what i mean but it's just like ugh. but you know it happens it happens whether it's like gosh lo uh, i can't even imagine that like losing somebody you you uh love you know to a, like some unexpected car accident like geez you know yeah. like that's not yeah it's weird too Sucky. and yeah i remember looking back on it and be like holy shit like i'm i'm older than she ever she was a few years older than me and then right. i was like i'm older than she ever ever right. was you know and yeah. then time starts to fade and you're like shit am i losing what they sound yeah, like yeah, and yeah, this yeah, this yeah, and that yeah. but i'm also i mean did you think you were gonna marry her uh i don't know i mean yeah. i was still in high school yeah, i yeah, was yeah. a little kid still you know? yeah um but i loved her but you I, loved def her. I definitely yeah. did so like, it's uh, real for you you know what i mean yeah so. yeah and that was the first like i had experienced loss before but that was the first one that even though we weren't like uh family or anything like right, that, but I, right. I still felt like i probably knew her the best i mean this is back when people still had you know, four-hour conversations yeah, on yeah, the phone. Yeah, yeah. Get off the phone! <laughs> That's you know, true. I'm trying That's to use true. the house yeah. phone. You know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, you knew each other well. <laughs> you know, it's like it's true. you really you, you talk the phone with the cord. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And now it, now it's it's pulling people are. Like, I don't even know if they should pick up the phone when they see a I friend know. call. It's I like, know, I know. That's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, oh. yeah. Sometimes I go out of my... I think about mm -hmm. someone, and I'll go to text them. I'll go out of my way. Let me just call. Yeah, them, no, that's true. I got to get better. I am very guilty of text. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a very, like, I am a texter, mm -hmm. for sure. I may not be social media, but I do text a lot. So, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I should call more. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. Do you know who Joey Diaz is? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, like, I know who he is. I don't yeah. really, like, follow, follow. But, yeah, I yeah, know who he is. Yeah, his friends always bring up how, like, he never texts. That's right. That's he, what uh, Joe Rogan says. Yeah, he just, he just ends up, he calls everyone. He yeah. He takes his time to talk to him. And uh, do you like hip-hop? I do. I do. I you like know, any kind of music. You know who part. Mad Lib is? I don't. <laughs> no. uh, you know who Freddie Gibbs is? No. 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 Okay. Um, well, anyways, Mad Lib's this amazing producer, I mean, and, and beat maker, arguably one of the greatest of all times. Yeah. And uh, I guess people were talking about working with him, and he was like, he straight up, like, doesn't text. Like, you, you need to call him, or oh. he'll only FaceTime on this, like, one, this one... Um, I think it was like iPad thing yeah. that he's got, like yeah. you know. But he just he wants to force it to be some sort of sincere communication. Yeah. No, I have a trouble. I have true. trouble with FaceTime. I don't like it mm. at all. <laughs> yeah, I've never been one for FaceTime myself. Regular yeah. phone calls is okay though. Yeah, that's cool. But no, yeah, that makes sense. Like just kind of trying to not like have it be so convenient with it dun, dun, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I think sometimes people, including myself, like will text because it's just easier and quicker mm -hmm. even you know so but yeah actually taking the time to like call and stuff like that is yeah. actually a, a better thing to do it's interesting to like so like we were saying before how like instagram and social media could be like a highlight reel of things yes but i've noticed too more and more even with close friends but you know you get older and 
you get separated by distance and responsibilities yeah. or whatever but people start to fall into this mold of like thinking that the conversation only has to do with a few things which is like what's up you know mm, like how's work how's yeah. whatever and then like there's like a box that's kind of difficult True. to get out of but it's very interesting seeing True. especially with close friends where the conversation goes once you get right outside that box you know yeah. there's stuff that everyone's always thinking about or whatever but they might not necessarily want to go there yeah immediately but you need to go there like it's not good to just keep everything bottled up right. in your own head you no know? no like, it's you gotta true. talk about things it's even true. if it's just shooting the shit like how is that movie or i saw yeah. this person now or yeah. you know random things but yeah you know, we yeah. evolved in groups and we evolved talking to each other every single day and now we're all in boxes that's true mm -hmm. yeah I it's never like more people more people than there's ever been in the history yeah. of humanity but you don't know your neighbors really i know, you know? i know yeah that's another thing yeah i don't know i don't know about this yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> you see, like, uh, slightly more impoverished communities, though, they still, the kids are still outside. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, they still know each other, so. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, that's, it. I, I never thought about that, but yeah, they're even, like, within your own, like, within your own, um, like, with, like, siblings sometimes or whatever is a certain box. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, conversations within the, you know what I mean? Yeah. So mm. that, you bring up a very good point there. I mean, I never thought of that. I feel like sometimes I have more open conversations with people that I'm not necessarily super close with, too. Because like they just, might have less expectations of you? No, like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I don't know what it is. Like, mm. I don't know if somehow, like you said, like it just kind of created this box where this is like what we talk about and mm. stuff like that. There's so no like, box yet with this person. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a yeah, little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. And I'm going to think about that. Well, like it's me and my mom don't really have a box box per se. We kind of do it certain topics, but like we can talk about anything if like I brought it up and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Same with my mom and I. Yeah. Are you close to both your parents? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, my dad is not too much of a talker, mm -hmm. but I'm close with him. I'm I like, you know, I'm yeah. 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 Yeah, for for me, I'm definitely uh, I'm close with both of them in different ways. But there you go. Yeah, there you go. But my mom and I are very like my parents got divorced when I was younger, and when I was younger, um, my dad was very strict, so mm. I would just lie to him about everything. <laughs> and my mom, I could tell everything to, okay. so I never lied to her at yeah. all. And yeah, and it's just. What a lesson for one day when I have children, you know, yeah. like, which way do you want it? They, yes. They, do you want to, yes. do you want to know where they are and maybe not yeah. feel that great about it? Or do you want to have no idea where they are because you're yeah. being way too strict about no, things? That, that's true. Like, um, and even when I tried to lie to my mom or my parents, my mom already knew, like yeah. she just knew there's no way. And then when I'd finally tell her, she's like, yeah, I was just waiting for you to tell me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was just like, I should have just told you, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever kind of mischief. That's good. She let be. you go for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She would wait till I would, they would, all, they always wait till I come to them. They've mm -hmm. never like been the type to like, um, you know, press the issue or, um, you know, yeah. So did you get in trouble as a kid? Not really, not really. I don't mm. think so. I mean, I wasn't even really, um, like growing up, like I wasn't really even a troublemaker, and or like I mean, I'm a fighter now, but I never really like fought, fought in mm. high school, like in high school and stuff like that. Um, maybe like after high school when, uh, cause I was doing taekwondo in high school and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I kind of lost my purpose. I then kind of became a troublemaker because I was like partying and stuff like that, and getting into my own trouble and stuff but um prior to that no not really you mm -hmm. know um yeah i don't uh, not really my parents say i was a pretty good kid you know that's good so i mean <coughs> i'm sure I, like you know yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah. so and yeah. are you and your brother close yeah like we were at certain points we are now in a different way because mm -hmm. uh, he has his his own ohana and you know his wife and their children and stuff like that so um but like i know if i really needed something from any of them then they would mm -hmm. be there and not at the drop of a dime so yeah. um 
But yeah, I mean, there was moments where we were close, you know, and um, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I feel he's kind of like my mom too. Like, if I needed to go talk to him about something, I could mm-hmm. and stuff. But I like actively like I'm always talking to my mom the most and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's huge. That's yeah. that's real huge. I remember when I was going through some tough times with with depression for <clears throat> a while. It was like oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I don't want to burden mm-hmm. these other people that I'm close with. Uh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. These thoughts are. Or like, uh, I and I shut myself out when in actuality the one thing I probably needed the most was right. not to shut right. myself out. And uh, my mom made a comment one time because I still like I, after a while I would open up to her and she would just be like, you know, sometimes I would hear what you're saying and there's there is no good advice for me to give back or anything like that. But like the only thing that I can really do is is be here to listen yeah. to the message yeah. and how big yeah. of a difference it makes when you have someone that you could at least yeah. get it all out to. No, you know? that's true. It makes like, a huge difference. Yeah. So yeah, it does. It really does. Like being able to just express like her and some of my aunties, like I like the one that passed and like my mom's sisters, like I'm like pretty close with them too. And so different moments in my life, I would have, they they would i would be able to like talk to them and mm-hmm. stuff and again like if i really really needed to talk to like one of my aunties about whatever like they would be there to like listen and stuff but um i think therapy is another great way to outlet too you know mm-hmm. like, through moments i've had therapists and i just started seeing a therapist again like telehealth kind because it's easier than mm-hmm. having I'm always on the go, go, go. So it's like easier to just do like telehealth appointments. So that's been a huge help, like just having a therapist back in my life again and stuff. So, yeah, I think everyone should have someone that they could get it all out to with no walls. Because with like if it's your mom, you know, there's some things that you don't want to get into with your mom. If it's your brother, there's some things you don't want to get into with your brother. Same thing with even your best friend. Yeah. And um, then there's just some things that they just won't understand. And that's a very difficult thing. At least with a therapist, they're kind of trained to know about these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah they get it you know there's nothing worse than having someone that you love and you could be like oh i'm depressed but they're just like what do you have to be depressed about and it's just like okay this i can't i don't want to spend the rest of this conversation getting into why i I feel the way i do right you know and the thing with depression it's like you could have like all Mm -hmm. these amazing beautiful things in your life but it's like there's a six foot glass wall in between you and those things so you can see them but you cannot feel them yes and it's a very hard thing for people that have never gone through it understand yeah it's even a hard thing to even like pinpoint like it's just something that happens and it's just that oh this is like an overwhelming feeling of sadness or whatever and it just like you said like you can i mean look at somebody like robin williams like Mm -hmm. he seemed to be super happy and just comedian but he was depressed from what i've gathered and you know had committed suicide and stuff so and he I'm had bad drug problems too. Yeah. <coughs> so like, you know, you, you just you really never know. I think that's like one thing like um every like my mom told me, um, there's that you really don't know what anyone is going through on any given day. So it's just like 'cause she um she's worked for the Department of Defense for like twenty something years now. And now she's a customer. What well, one of the things she does now is like a customer relation kind, where she has to like give these briefings mm-hmm. to like you know the people that she works with and stuff because um sometimes the patients come and they complain about how they're being treated by the doctors and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So she just basically has to like t- um have to tell them you know we don't know like what these people may be experiencing you know on both sides Mm -hmm. you don't know what these people may be experiencing so it's like trying to like find a better approach and how to treat people in general because we really don't know what anybody is going through you know what i mean you can be happy on the outside but totally like sad on the inside or you know so i try to like take that approach with with things and I mean, I feel like for the most part, I do a pretty decent job. Well, that and I got didn't get treated the best by like, you know, certain like relatives growing up and just sometimes like people like school kids in general, not necessarily friends, but school 
school people <laughs> who caught <laughs> up me. So I didn't really get treated the best. So it's just like, I didn't like the way that felt. And sometimes when people get treated that way, they do it because that's how they were treated. Mm-hmm. But I was, the, I'm, I'm the opposite. Because I felt like not good how they treated me. I try not to treat people that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's it, it, very powerful. Yeah. Because it's kind of an outlier situation. Yeah, like they yeah. say, kids that get abused generally turn yeah. into peop- adults that abuse their right. children. Right. Um, you know, and then once in a while, it, it more often than not, that, that that is the case. And then once in a while, you get someone who's abused and then they're like, I will never right. be this way to right. a significant yeah. other or to my children. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It is really one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And for me, it just kind of went, went the opposite way, you know, not like into bullying and stuff like that. And yeah so um sometimes people i mean you know again you don't know what they're going through and that's probably them projecting whatever bull crap mm-hmm. they're going through and that's why they're doing it to you kind yeah. of a thing but that hurt people hurt people thing. yeah yeah so yeah. it's just like whatever you know yeah i don't know but yeah. try me now no nah, just kidding <laughs> just joking <laughs> but seriously <laughs> but for real no 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 that's hilarious though yeah um but yeah so what do you um is there is there anyone that you that you specifically want to go after for the next fights that you got or Um, might may have i don't have anyone in specific like for me i i just eventually want to fight the best of the best Mm -hmm. at some point um i'm not saying that i haven't for i fought some fairly good competition as an amateur um one of them one of them ended up in the UFC. One of them ended up as a champion in one FC, mm-hmm. and um, a couple of them ended up. Well, one of them ended up in Invicta, uh, and then a couple of them are still, you know, like in kind of bigger promotion. So I fought some fairly good competition as an amateur down here locally. Uh, for me, though, I uh, I I don't have anyone in specific. A fight is a fight for me. Um, I just I just want to make sure that I fight the best of the best. Yeah, that's it. So that way I can know what I need to improve on. Whether I win or lose, there's always an improvement. Mm-hmm. So to just go in there and test yourself is what my biggest thing is. You know, more than anything now. Um, <coughs> I think for me though, like if I had to um pick some names out there, I already go into like eventually get into the UFC. I would love to fight somebody like Valentina Shevchenko. I think mm-hmm. she's remarkable. I think she is such a skilled athlete and super high IQ and she's a champion right now in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to fight uh, gosh, we, there's a lot of good 125ers in the UFC. Oh yeah. Right now I'm like I'm teetering between 135 and 125, but I eventually want to get to where I'm just fighting at 125. Okay. But I definitely would like to fight her at some point if she's still there when I get there, which I feel like she will be. She's fairly dominant, and I don't think, I don't think it should take me that long. You know, at least a co- within the next few years or so to get to where mm-hmm. I know I can get her. She's a good matchup. Um, I mean, gosh, I can't think off the top of mm-hmm. my head. But she's the one that I would definitely, like, I would, it would be a good fight. You know. What do you walk around at normally compared to you fight at mm. 125? Not right now. So um, I got to get my walk, rate, my walk around weight lower. Right now, I probably walk around at like 150, I, 154-ish mm-hmm. right now. So I want to get it to where I'm like at least maybe 145, 44. So and then you'd I, cut to 125? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what it would be. So, uh, does it take a lot out of you when you cut? When you do it, that's another big when you subject. Do it, when you do it the wrong way, yeah. When you do it the wrong way, it takes a lot out of you for sure. Um, my pro debut fight, um, where I actually won with a spinning back fist, that was like the fourth of like just really bad weight cuts happening in uh, too close of a like you know time period time period yeah. where i had to go to the er because really? when i was trying to rehydrate i couldn't stop throwing up 
and I needed IV and everything, you know. Damn. Yeah, because I was super nauseous, couldn't stop throwing up. And was that like a sweat out cut? <sighs> that was another sweat out cut. Yeah, yeah, it was a horrible cut. That that twenty pounds, uh, something like that. Uh, it was about fifteen pounds a week of, and I had done a couple of other ones prior to that where it was just really not good weight cuts and you know the thing that people don't realize is like you know you drop this Im immense amount of weight and then you pick it back back up and then they they want you to like fight in a couple of months but your body holds on to it mm -hmm. you, you still have those couple of months but you really can't let go it's not going to let go yeah, you know yeah. because he was putting it through all this stress and stuff this whole time yeah it's like we so got it back we want to hang on to it yeah yeah, yeah. So what the fuck was that yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ex exactly yeah so then it then puts you another t into another time crunch because like then it's like you know like a few weeks out already and you're still like 20 pounds mm -hmm. out you know what i mean yeah and then you put yourself into that same crunch again and then the same thing happens so uh, i think my body was just like uh-uh yeah. like you know what i Too mean much yo -yoing. yeah mm -hmm. and it was not good at all and i literally had not much left in me and before i went into the cage i was just like you know what god i'm just leaving this all to you and i'm gonna go in there do the best that i can and whatever happens happens and i mean i i mean i got her with the spinning back fist in the second round you know and we had a a really good first round and like i i had a pretty strong out i don't know what they call it like those like an output yeah something like that i forget what my former coach said like i don't know what my punching output was in that first round but it was kind of high mm -hmm. and i caught her with the spinning back fist in the second round but i was quite drained and but i just knew i wasn't i wasn't going to go down not giving it my all you mm -hmm. know and win or lose i was just proud of the fact that i was going to do that and it's funny though because after I had got that win, um, like Max and some of his team was there, and then we went to the back, and Max was like, "Oh, that would have been ten grand in the UFC, <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an yeah. extra ten yeah, grand." Yeah, for the and I'm just yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was just like, yeah. And did you do you know him personally? Not personally, yeah. but um, I always tell I, people I'm gonna get Max on the podcast, and then I'll wait a second, and I'll be like, he doesn't know it yet, but I'm just yeah. man manifesting this. No, you uh, will, you uh, will. Um, I uh, Russell knows Max. I maybe I can talk to Russell for f and see if he can talk to Max and stuff like that. I don't know him personally, but mm -hmm. we've had some conversations. You know, like yeah. when I was, because I had um did a little bit of training with them. Uh, um, at one point in time and we had like talk story and stuff like that so yeah yeah i don't know him like on that level but like we know of each other yeah it's yeah. interesting when he was on rogan last i'm pretty sure like how i asked you how you who you use and your team or whatever when you prep for a fight his answer is kind of similar to yours really? I, I believe i think he's basically like it's my f like family and people that i've been doing this with forever yeah you know? yeah and he, he's got like some killers in there and it yeah. helps him a lot yeah yeah but I'm i would imagine that if like any training that you got with his camp too would be like hugely beneficial yeah, yeah. i i i'm assuming it would be but I, um, yeah, I mean, I've got to train with, like, a lot of good fighters. I mean, I got to train with Andrea Lee, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know her? Andrea yeah. KGB Lee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so her. I mean, I got to train with um, just even the local girls down here, you know, like Angela Lee and Raquel Paluhi, Rachel Ostovich and stuff. Me and Rachel were, like, teammates for a bit and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's been, that's why I say, like, um, I got a lot of good training f from the get go, mm -hmm. and I still have a lot of good training. Even if they aren't in a promotion, they're still like really good training partners, you know. And I don't know. Yeah, and it's just been wonderful. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's huge. Yeah, I mean no, to for get real. a little bit of a bunch of different styles and different yeah. training regimens. Yeah, you know what I should do is actually see if I can get Russell into your podcast, and yeah. then you can ask him about Max. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, w I was when I was doing like my own little research on you. I I yeah. uh, I, I jumped because I saw you with him, and then yeah. I started doing so. I was like, oh shit, he's fucking good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, yeah, he's, yeah. he's good. He's good. He would be a good person to have in your podcast because he's like funny you yeah. know and stuff so. well though i think i told That's you when, when we first talked on the phone too it's like 
if there's one thing that I would like to keep consistent about this podcast, it's if I know you and you're a genuine person yeah. before whatever else is the reason why I want to have you on or someone that I already know and love knows you yeah, and yeah, says yeah, that yeah. You, and in this case the mutual connection is Ben right, right. right but you know it just makes such a big difference right. in like people you know yeah. I would, I'd like to make sure that yeah. I'm not just having people on just because of the name right true, I'd like to true. know through someone or true. something like that that they're a good individual first true. and foremost yeah you know? no he's a pretty cool guy for yeah. sure yeah. yeah, I think he would be a good person to get. Yeah, on. I like to give everyone one one yeah. reference. Like, yes. who, who do you think I should have on? So, yeah. okay, Russell. Yeah, yeah, I All can, right. I can. Um, I'll see him tomorrow. I can talk to him and see if he. Yeah, yeah, to do it. that'd be cool. Yeah, he's yeah. super cool. I like doing a few all at once when I when I get this place set up and yeah. then, then I put the living room back to normal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I guess one other thing I'm wondering about about you is, so I read this book. It's called uh do you you read it all? I should. You know who I'm Paulo Coelho is? No. No, he does like the Alchemists and uh the Fifth Mountain. But anyways, I heard about that, the Alchemist. Yeah, that's that's like a good that's a good I feel like write a passage book that every everyone should read. It's because uh -huh. it's a kind of it's a story that you could easily whoever you are, whatever your journey is, you could easily put mm. yourself in there and okay. see everything metaphorically from that perspective. But I hear a lot of people, um, when they talk about like the greatest warriors they'll talk about like bruce lee talked about this um what's his name from the book of five rings and um the art of war um mm. few, few other people but they'll talk about how you know if if you're a warrior like a warrior should be skilled in in all things in their life the right, second right. like the second a warrior starts getting better at poetry he starts getting better he or she starts getting better at fighting and right, right. so i was wondering are there any other things whether whether or not you'd consider them art but like little hobbies anything else outside of fighting that you like to focus on Oh gosh, I wish. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I just feel like there's not enough time in a day. I yeah. mean, I really well, should not. be better. At, <laughs> I really should be better at reading. I mean, if I do read, I do read a lot of scriptures. I, you know, but um, no, I'm so boring. That's <laughs> 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 it's just that, or I just kind of like I need my downtime to like you know just kind of recharge, recharge mm -hmm. and meditate and everything like that. Um, when you meditate, are you? Lotus position, fingers. Honestly, spine, no. I'm just like. And I don't judge. Cause I feel like, I feel like at the end of the day, if if you're taking the time out for yourself, period. You yeah. Know, you could call running meditating. You could call yeah. laying down and breathing exercises meditating. But yeah, yeah. Um, mm. no. Normally, it kind of just happens when I'm like. I know, like, sometimes it's even in the shower or sometimes mm -hmm. it's just, like, me driving, you know, I meditate. But maybe I, 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 I don't know, that, that one that you were saying about the side stuff, mm -hmm. like, uh. Like, gardening helps me if it's not <laughs> blatantly yeah, obvious. Garden. But, I mean, gardening. I lost a big garden in Boston, but I realized how much gardening helped right. me or even playing video games sometimes right, right, right you know right. like these other little things that i get joy out of right uh, no i mean i do like to watch like different fighters and stuff mm -hmm. like that and just pick up stuff from them i know that's still fight related though oh but, but it's it, still different you yeah know? It's definitely still like different. watching that or like um what you i used to do is um watch a lot of stuff from kobe because i'm a huge kobe mm -hmm. fan it's just his mentality and um him and Brady, I like yeah. to watch, you know. Definitely. And I just, that kind of stuff, yeah, you know. Um, or just, um, I think before, like, I really want to do it again, though. It was like, I would really just watch a lot of different um, footage of different fighters and kind of just see what I could, like, utilize or, like, mm. you know, what works for me and stuff. It is kind of, like, input into my game and stuff. Who so. are some of your favorites? Some of my favorite fighters, definitely <coughs> Dominic Cruz, mm -hmm. TJ Dillashaw. Um, oh, I've yeah. become a fan of Tatiana Suarez mm -hmm. because of her story. And I'm not, I mean, I'm more of a striker, but her grappling is phenomenal. Um, 
there is somebody uh so Dom, TJ, oh Rose. I mm. love Rose. I love I've Rose I've too. been a I've been a fan of her since Doug Invicta. Rose. Doug Rose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been a go. fan of hers from Invicta. She's so. such a great person too. Yes, I mean actually everyone that you brought up is yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so Rose and I had I just recently added Russell onto my list mm-hmm. because I watched his fights. So I was just like, I don't know why I didn't research him earlier, <laughs> but there's just stuff that I've learned from him that is like I'm still have to get better at, but just um, things that he's showing that I really I think I can u- start utilizing and stuff. So, mm. so those are probably me, like my tops: Dom, TJ. I like Russell. Um, Rose and Tatiana Suarez mm-hmm. for sure. I think I feel like there's might be one more. Nah, that's a yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Dominic Cruz, man. What? Oh, and Gino. Yep. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His uh, his his journey too. Yeah, and in and in innovation of style. Just I love it. Unlike. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could say a lot of people are unlike anyone else, but his is really. Like yeah jesus christ yeah <laughs> like, i know yeah. i know yeah. i i i really really like be, like i watched a lot of dominic cruz fights before i fought tina mm-hmm. in invicta and funny she comes out of the same f- um uh where does he fight oh gosh i i know it alliance mm-hmm. yeah. she comes from alliance oh, it's so okay. crazy yeah so i mean would have been cool to have eric delfino in her corner mm-hmm. you know like while we were fighting but like, and for the record i i don't the what was it the dominic crew was it him and henry so who oh else? they shouldn't have called that they should uh, if, not if anything it was even yeah yeah you know? they should not have mm-mm. i've yeah. seen i've seen worse that they let continue on yeah. so i'm just and like no it like, was like homeboy it was not done at yeah all, he wasn't you know? he wasn't there was know. i feel like that that there was like a few weekends or fight cards in a row that yeah fights were called yes too, too early and also just while we're on the subject and because we're in hawaii all right, Max mm. definitely did not lose against no. uh, what's his Alexander. name, Alexander. You're talking uh, about the first time. The first time I I can see why they would. Mm-hmm. The second time I don't think he. I, I, I certainly don't think he lost. No, second no. time. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> first time it was close. I still think that they could have gave it to Max. Mm-hmm. But second time he made so many good adjustments and like yeah. he switched up his game completely, threw more kicks, mm-hmm. um, and just different things that I don't. Yeah, no, yeah. not not in my opinion. But there's something I respect like crazy. Like I, 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 if I'm being honest with myself, I feel like I might have a hard time not being like pissed about yeah. that. Yeah. And he was just yeah. so like is what it is. Yeah. Just coming back harder. Yeah. It's yeah. uh, these things happen, and I really respect that. Yeah. No, for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he lost that one either, but mm. it yeah. is what it is. Are you excited for any? I mean, I feel like recently all the cards are fucking amazing. Um, definitely Rose mm-hmm. and isn't it Jean Wei I think so. It's gonna be a good one. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a tough one because mm-hmm. I mean that China girl is really you know. Yeah. She, I'm she calling her. Chi- I'm. I, I have Chinese <laughs> in me, so, so whatever okay. I can say it. Yeah, I'm a yeah, mixed yeah. plate of stuff. Yeah, same here. But even if I wasn't, <laughs> I probably still would say it. So whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know how to pronounce her hey, name. Hey, stop Asian hate. <laughs> 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 oh goodness uh, but yeah her, uh, that's gonna be a tough one because she's she's a good fighter mm-hmm. she has a lot of power so um but i feel like rose can do it she's mm-hmm. the smaller of the two but uh, i i hope she super can super smart yes yeah yeah for, for, Excited for that um i hope the nganu and john joan things happen oh that I would wonder. just be very very interesting oh uh, i i wow yeah that'd be really i really wanted um izzy izzy yeah yeah same here i'm a huge izzy fan i am too i mean yeah. that fight against uh paula costa was mm. just like i felt like that was his uh, i don't know i mean he's always been amazing but that was yeah. when i watched that fight i'm like holy yeah shit, yeah it's on a different level yeah i mean 
even that this last he went up a weight class yeah yeah it didn't so, work out for him yeah, but yeah he didn't do too bad though yeah you know? yeah but i would like to see him against john jones for sure definitely but i just feel like he definitely needs to gain more weight or something because john yeah. jones is heavier yeah 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 and john jones is saying that he wants to be the same or heavier than in ghana uh, if they fight him. okay okay yeah. and Ghanu, be, what a story that dude has oh gosh i don't God. even know his story oh yeah he was just in poverty and i forget where in africa oh, okay. and like needed to basically escape and use um what are they called um the people that like get you out of a country oh, but he wow. needed to like escape to france he didn't even know where he was going in yeah. europe but i mean his life is a, wow. is, a, is a story like a real a story of a lot of triumph he just recently beat stipe right mm -hmm. and stipe had beat him the first time yeah so good for him yeah you know and i mean wrong. he hasn't he hasn't been fighting for that long yeah i mean i think he's only been in there for a little over five years or something like yeah, that yeah, so yeah. I mean, and you hear a lot of a lot of the greatest fighters will talk about taking one of their first big losses and like walking out of there happy yeah, because yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. they're like I haven't been doing it this long. I don't. I I know my training hasn't been that long enough for me to have been right. fully developed, and I right. feel like I was close. So if right. I lost now, I know I could beat them with right. like a little bit more preparation. Well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. I mean, yeah. I I think. Um, like I always tell people now, I mean, whenever you go in there, you always have a, a chance to win or lose, mm -hmm. right? Um, but, you know, if you are in like that, you know, me right mental frame and all this stuff, it's going to be really hard to beat me. You mm -hmm. know, like I, I mean, I feel like a lot of my losses came because of like either lack of experience or just m like mental, mm -hmm. mental things and stuff like that. So I think now I'm at the point where it's just like, you know, like, you know, I'm ready to just kind of show, show yeah. people, you know what I mean? And I'm okay with saying that now before I, I would like keep it to myself. And I'm not like going around saying, oh, I can catch yeah, some, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not, not doing that either. But what I am saying is that, um, it's an opportunity made for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it will be extremely hard to beat me. And if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to like, you don't have to work for it mm -hmm. but that's kind of always been all of my fights they had to work for it you know what i mean whether it ended like sooner rather than later they didn't like getting hit <laughs> <laughs> so you know yeah. i know i have that in my back pocket they don't like getting hit um but yeah i i look forward to what the future will will bring and i mean you'll be seeing me at some point oh for yeah. sure you know I, that's just my feeling on it yeah i'm excited for it yeah I'm very no, excited you, for i'll it. let you know yeah you know what and i mean then i love being able to like this these are great uh timeline markers yeah yeah you know yeah true, I mean? true true yeah true. and um and when i when i edit them you'll be able to i mean also if you if you need content i mean yeah. what are we at right now we're at two hours and 19 minutes oh, right nice. there is plenty of okay. little 30 second things five okay, minute cool. things that you could like i could cut for you or that you could screen record on the youtube or whatever okay. and just boom you got stuff for your page you got oh, yeah. stuff for your page yeah yeah yeah. talking about whatever that'd be cool yeah and okay so that's that's huge to have so i'm excited to see uh where it yeah, all goes you'll have to have me back i 100 yeah. percent will yeah it'll be celebration <laughs> yeah for reals yeah. no, for reals i definitely have an achievement of being like the first oh, female from hawaii hawaiian to raise my hand and get that belt one day i mean that's always been the, the goal it's not a dream it's just a goal you mm -hmm. know and um I'm not afraid with saying that regardless of it, if it may or may not come to fruition, I'm going to, I'm going to say what I'm going to say and I'm going to definitely fight like hell to get there. So, um, you know, I think, uh, I think that I can. And I mean, that's one, that's one thing I did love about Kobe is like he, he would say these things and he would fail mm -hmm. miserably in the very beginning Which of his Kobe? career. Kobe Bryant. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. He would, um, he, he, he would, you know, I mean, I don't know if you followed Kobe and a little young, bit. Yeah, 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 like he would say these things and he would fail, but he's just like, yeah, so what? And mm -hmm. he came back and you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of how I am now, you know, like, yeah, you if gotta, I fail, I fail, but 
I mean, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to, I mean, what are you going to do? Put out negative energy yeah, into the yeah, universe beforehand? Yeah, exactly. It's exactly, like, yeah. yeah. And if anything, it, it uh, when you speak something out loud, especially in like a more public forum or to yeah. people that you care about, it gives you something to hold yourself accountable to. True. You yeah. You know what I mean? Very true. Very so, true. And if you, I mean, everyone, everyone in, should have a, like a goal or carrot that they're running yeah, after, after yeah. in their life. True. And if it's something worthwhile, you're going to learn a, a ton along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. What's something that you feel like after, you know, you've had losses, obviously, yeah. you know, what's, what are some of the bigger takeaways you've had from a loss? Cause I think arguably it's, you know, it's, it's like that. What's that cliche cliche saying? It's not. If you fall down, it's how you stand up. Right. You know, what are, is there anything that stands out as like a big lesson learned or? Um, I think uh, some of the lessons I learned from, from losing is one, like just kind of accepting it, mm -hmm. you know, as it happens. Um, but just uh, recognizing the holes in my game that I needed to get better at and still need to get better at. And that's some of the reasons why I did lose, you know, whether mm -hmm. it be like lack of grappling or um lack of conditioning my striking has always been my number one go-to and i'm really really good at striking but i just think from all of my losses it was uh shoring up the holes that needed to be um you know filled mm -hmm. and then um also just different strategies and actually implementing them and thinking about it now whereas before i'd go in and kind of just like sometimes just fight or flight kind of a thing mm -hmm. so i've had a few moments where <coughs> i was thinking less and just kind of going so now i'm just trying to find a balance of like not overthinking but thinking to a certain point to get different you know looks or different reactions or like a flow state in the right like a flow state yeah, yeah like a flow state because you definitely don't want to overthink mm -hmm. you do want mus muscle memory to take over to t some extent but also like you know you got to be like also just in that flow state yeah so yeah i think um i think that is some of the lessons that i've learned from my losses and um just was always from every loss just was always hungry to get back in to like see where i was at and you know i had a lot of losses you know as an amateur i'm 2-0 and as a professional now i'm i mean i'm definitely like gonna try to fight to stay undefeated but i'm also like if I lose, then I lose, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've also learned that, like, losing isn't the end of the world kind of a thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's some of the things that I have learned from from my losses. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are some people, though, they they go undefeated for a while and then they take a loss and they don't know how to, yeah, yeah. How to come back from yeah. it. It's like to get that out of the way and to learn, you know, yeah. those lessons in earlier on is yeah. probably huge. Yeah. It no, says a lot right. about you, too, f to go through that and then yeah. to to keep pursuing it. You know? Oh, yeah. I don't I honestly sometimes don't feel like if other fighters that I know were in my position that they probably still be doing it you know because sometimes i feel like sometimes fighters do it for the wrong reasons and mm -hmm. they don't do it for the pure passion and the love of it but they do it for like the accolades or the attention yeah kind of a thing oops sorry okay. <laughs> 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 but yeah for me like it's never about the accolades or the attention it's the complete opposite like mm -hmm. i'm not a big fan of attention but i know that that it just kind of comes with the the territory yeah. as you gain success which is fine but for me, it's just always because I, like, literally love it, <laughs> you know? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. And so. you can tell, like, the because like, there's been some fighters that they were, like, big up-and-comers as amateurs. And, like, they're, like, just off the map already. Yeah. You know? So. And then, yeah, like I said, there's, like, just fighters out there that do it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But my reasons are different. So, yeah. Yeah. No judgment, though. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Do you have, um, cause I know like fighting in general, that it eventually takes a toll. Do you have a time is, have you ever, ever had the conversation with yourself? Like af at a certain age or do anything that would mark a time that you would think you'd want to transition out or you think this is something that, you know, well, I play, play by ear. I think for me, it's, yeah, it's not really an age thing for me. It's just more of a 
by ear thing. Yeah. 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 Definitely. More than anything. And I know after wherever I end up with my fight career, that'll lead me into different platforms, mm-hmm. you know, with that success and you make different investments and then you create different platforms and you know, I look forward to that chapter in my life. But um first things first, you gotta get to where you need to get and then you can sustain it mm-hmm. and then you move on from there and yeah you know so yeah yeah i mean there are different things that i think about eventually but not yet <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> gotta start with this one first mm-hmm. yeah you're in this chapter correct yeah. correct my yeah. brother and i were talking the other day and it was just like oh there's gonna be a professor samson chapter and uh yes you know yes, yes. right right yeah. now no, no, yeah right now yes you yes know, exactly get to learn and grow different chapters Mm -hmm. so yeah this is where i'm at and um no time limit no pressure and i i believe i'll know when it's the time until then you know it's this is where we are at (laughs) (laughs) well i think that might be a good good spot to to cut it off and then i think that's a great way to kind of intro when i have you back cool cool yeah Yeah, for sure and i definitely will talk to russell tomorrow okay yeah Yeah. that'd be awesome i will okay monica thank you very much for coming (laughs) thank you